Everybody tells me that it just starts automatically, but again, uh, I only know because right over there it says stream live, and I see you guys popping up on the chat over here. Oh, I just got a notification from YouTube that I am now live on my own channel, so, you know, thanks for keeping me informed. Uh, to the, to the, uh, I'll wait until we get a, a viewer update from, from my YouTube panel. Uh, to tell me how many people are actually watching this so I can say hello to the X number of you. But the delay to YouTube seems to be about, I don't know, 45 seconds, something like that. So, uh, so far, in, so, <laughs> uh, so, so far as I know, uh, well, he said I'm blinking. So we're, we're definitely, we're definitely here. We are in the house. So yeah, chat is, chat is scrolling along. Uh, to for for the stuff that none of you can see, but I'll fill you in on it anyway. What did we blow the money? What did we, what did we blow that sweet sweet Google money on this month? Uh, we are no longer operating off of the MacBook Air that I got a couple of years ago in like 2021. I got a little MacBook Air. I just bought right up here, just behind the microphone. I got a Mac Mini to run this off of. And it's still, it's using the Acer monitor. And more importantly, we updated the 10 year old ethernet over power system that was bringing, because all we needed internet inside this building for, because there's no TV, uh, we don't watch videos. We don't know, we come out here to work, right? We, we work on things and we make stuff. So all we needed the internet for was uh, run a Pandora off of an iPad that's so old it doesn't even have a camera in it. And I think if I unplugged it, it would probably die immediately. So we had 10 year old ethernet over power adapter where it uses your house wiring to run your internet. And uh, apparently that doesn't work because I bought new ones and uh, the internet speed increased. It went from four megabits to about 380. So it's slightly faster. So we have dropped one, we have dropped one rendered frame and we have not skipped a single frame. So I have a whole uh, panel up here on the side to see how that goes. So it's all new stuff, but I feel good about, I have a little, I can, I can unplug this guy. I have a little keyboard to type on now. It's Bluetooth. My fingers are way too big for it. I mash away at it, but we are, uh, I'm guessing since you're next to the post, uh, Jeff at the temple says, I'm guessing since you're next to the post office, you get your mail at the end of the route. A couple years ago, our routes shift and move all the time, but I was talking to our postal carrier one day, and he told me that our house is literally the last house in the city that gets mail. If you'll imagine that this, uh, this is my street, and this is the street that the post office is on, my mailbox is right here. He puts the mail in my box, he drives down, he crosses the street, he pulls into the parking lot, and he parks his mail truck. So yes, we get our uh, we get our <laughs> we get our mail uh, very late. Sometimes in the summer when they get backed up, we get our mail at like six or seven o'clock at night. It's uh, it's not it's not great. Uh, Justin Farrell from the humidity capital of the world called Coastal Mississippi. Uh, no direct offense intended to the great state of Mississippi, but uh, y'all can keep that. It is uh, we, we're sitting about fifty percent humidity here. In, in the canyon today, but we're also sitting at about 60 degrees. So 60, 50 is, is pretty okay. We are going to have, um, uh, we'll probably wait, uh, like, let's say, let's say, let's, let's schedule it for the second hour. Uh, we've got stuff to just give away. We've got stuff to give away this week, stuff that was featured in videos, uh, stuff that was from videos before. I think everything in here might have been featured in a video before, and we need to clear out some space. So be ready for that. Have I thought of how I'm going to do uh, any sort of giveaway on the day? No. Uh, I think it'll come along the lines of, I'll ask anybody if they wants this, if they wants this things, and uh, I'll give that thing to them. Not this thing. We don't, we don't give away this thing. This guy you, 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 some of you, some of you, the, the regulars might recognize this guy. I had mentioned that uh, when we did the 
the brushed motor extravaganza with the Enjora speed control. Uh, some of the screws up here are not as happy as they once were. I think this one basically just isn't holding. It's just spinning. So I did in order, I, I did indeed order a set of plastics. So baseline is going to get the whole, we're going to do the top end. We're going to do, we're going to do it NHRA style where we're just, we're just going to rebuild the top end as I don't need to. And we have this, let's see, this, this guy's, this guy's built to work. Uh, I thought I just saw shit. Yeah. See, no one tell on me, but I'm driving lol. I'm, I'm just here to make noise in the background anyway. So, oh, B man, he's always wondered what's inside the bear box. It is more disappointing than you could ever know. Uh, absolutely nothing. We, uh, <laughs> we, <laughs> we need to put some, okay. There's like 40 people here. We need to put something inside the bear box so that only the very, the most secret society will know what's in the bear box. I do have this little globe that came off of a necklace of some sort and it goes, that was some ASMR stuff right there. So the jingly globe is now inside the bear box. We'll think of something to put in the bear box for later, but that will work. That will work for today. It's an associated, just some, some, some six, three seconds. I still have a whole, uh, I think, is that completely stripped out? I have a whole selection of old associated screws from back in the days of the T3 when everything was imperial or standard, including back then the, the factory team fasteners were all aluminum, which was a, a great idea, especially for a guy that uses a power driver on everything. And uh, I don't know if he's here. Hello, Nick. Uh, I don't know if he's in here, but someone had asked, what is the process for either, vice versa, either installing the slipper eliminator or installing a slipper? Like, basically, I guess what they were asking is, how do you get to the spur gear? And we are going to answer that question incidentally, I think. Yep. That guy is gone. I've got to reach back here and get, we're, we're, we've had to, we've had to go Negosaurus already. Hopefully we can, uh, get a grab on that. Otherwise we're not, we're not going to be able to get his, I might have to get the Dremel and cut a slot in this. This one is shot. I'm trying to be all delicate with the plastics, reminding myself that none of these plastics are going back in. Is it just got stuff stuck in it? No, that's completely round. That is completely round. Now I know the jingly globe is in the bear box. Yep. The world is inside the bear box. I'm now thinking, I wonder if I can knock a... Okay, I got some turn on it. Let's see if this will come out. Ooh... Yeah, that's just uh that's just round. There's no there's no hex left in that at all. Just waiting for my transmission so I can finish my first crawler. And then you'll get to be like the rest of us and be rebuilding them. So it's just four screws, five screws. This is the beauty of the Stealth XF for me. If none if none of you all are super familiar with the XF relative to the X, you take those five screws out. There's two here and three along the back. And then just the whole, the whole head, the whole top end lifts out and the whole bottom end stays in the vehicle. So we can do this maintenance. We are going to replace everything except this part. We're not, we're not replacing the bottom end. I think his bottom end is probably fine. But we are going to replace all of these disgusting plastics. And to answer the person's question, whether they're here or not, we're gonna we're gonna answer it. To get to the slipper is annoying. That's why I run my slipper. I prefer a slipper over an eliminator. I still like that that little bit of 
It just needs to give instead of sn snapping a drive shaft. You have to take out six screws. And on the stock box, uh, whether you get the kit or you get the in inside an FE, it comes with terrible zinc plated fasteners. And then you pull this guy off and there, there he is. <laughs> There's a, we've, we may have polluted the slipper clutch the tiniest bit. That is a very greasy. And there is a, there is a hole in the top shaft. You can't even see it. There's a hole in the shaft to hold that so that I can, that I can pull the, this apart because then you have to pull that apart so that you can get this off of this, which we pull out six more, six more. Luckily, as I have pointed out, you don't have to do this very often. Uh, this, oh, <laughs> Sal Tripp and guitar and pedal code baseline sure looks haggard. He kind of, I mean, he does a little bit. Um, this guy works and it got to a point where I was like, I'm just not even bothering to clean up like the plastics and stuff because he's just going to have to go out again and get all messy all over again. Have you thought building a Stealth X four gear style? No owner drive, but using the 18% gears. Oh, I see. I think I see. So, <laughs> so <laughs> casual crawlers. So greasy slipper bad. Got it. Well, I mean, yeah. It so for for this to actually be remaining functional, I have to assume that it's just locked all the way down, because otherwise it should be slipping pretty much constantly. Let's see if my little special tool will fit the hole, or if we need a, a bigger, a smaller tool. <laughs> it will not fit, and now I've touched it. I've touched it. All right. Oh, you know what would be great? You know what might help here? Maybe clean some of the grease off. But again, with the XF, uh, slipper performance is going to be less consistent than it would with anybody else because look at the size of the slipper pads. They're about the size of a dime, and uh, generally, you know, the bigger look at look at old timey associated slippers. Um, Miata commuter uh, giving away memberships again. Uh, you guys are knowingly or unknowingly uh, keeping me afloat here because people don't, most folks don't renew. So I pick up a bunch of members when Miata Commuter and Shaker MT gift them out. And then when the 30 days comes around or the 28 days or however long the membership cycle is for, uh, then they expire. And my, my, my revenue thing, it goes like this. It goes whoosh, boosh, whoosh, whoosh. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's fun for my psyche. I hate doing this. I can't do I can't bring myself to do it. Uh, I don't, I don't know how many of these I've broken using them as pry bars or things to hold uh, shafts or something. You know what we're going to do instead? We'll get a drill bit. I don't care if I break a drill bit. Drill bits are cheap. That one looks perfect. And I will hold it by the end with the uh, flutes on it. Come on. It's so greasy. I am a, I am a habitual over greaser. That's, ne that's never going to change. I'm about to hit that year mark. That wasn't as, that wasn't as bad as I thought. So all those parts are going to be cleaned one way or the other. And now we can pull the rest of it apart. Oh, there's the door. It's so greasy. It's so greasy. Crawler life membership on auto is the best because. I, th I think I think most people most people do not. I'm not I'm not guilt I'm not trying to uh, we're not guilting anyone here. If you want to be a member, that's great. Uh, did the box of junk show up yet? It has uh, Miata commuter. It has not. But 
Uh, I haven't gotten my mail today. You, uh, Amazon hasn't even been here today. I guess it's a, I guess it's a busy Friday. I'm supposed to have a bunch of stuff coming in from Amazon. Oh yeah, that's just fully greased on the slipper pad. We'll get some alcohol on that and try to clean it up as best we can. But it is, uh, it is less than optimal. <laughs> Always abusing tools. I do that a lot, like using a screwdriver as a chisel. Screwdriver as a chisel is the best. Sometimes you need something that's like a chisel, but is not as sharp as a chisel. Because uh, with the with the quasi woodworking background that we've got going on over here, uh, I have a lot of chisels, and some of them are very nearly woodworker sharp. So very nearly razor sharp, meaning. And sometimes I use chisels as pry bars, and I use screwdrivers as chisels, and none of these are recommended operations. Yes, baseline. What was that? Baseline is definitely getting uh, some some care today uh, because he needs it. Oh, and luckily we just get to if that bearing comes out. I think it does. I almost grabbed that. If uh, if this bearing comes out, I don't even need to uh, remove these pieces. Say farewell to the to, to to the front parts. This is really the part. This part and this part are the parts that really needed to be replaced because those are the four screws that hold the motor mount on, and they're all not stripped out, but they're. They're hogged out pretty badly, and we don't even have to clean that stuff. And not having to clean stuff is almost the best. Oh, it's it's moving. It's moving. So Jeff's package will be here today. You just need to buy the correct screwdrivers. <laughs> I was reminded this morning by my uh, by my wife that uh, today is Good Friday. I had. These things don't uh, don't occur to me. Uh, the only reason I knew what day it was is because uh, we stream on Fridays. So I I knew it was Friday. That's that's what <laughs> that's worth something. I don't know. I don't know uh, who said. It. I don't know, Derek. I don't know about channel locks. Good old knuckle busters. I'm more I'm more of a vice grip man because a. Uh, a vice grip seems less likely to just arbitrarily betray you. I, I do have a, a, a set of channel locks around here. Every, you know, I'll agree. Every Friday is good. Who doesn't? Who doesn't? Who doesn't love a Friday? Yeah, I've 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 a hundred percent gone. Too long without without maintaining him you know what we're gonna do we're going to be very lazy and if these slipper pads are not the sticky back kind and honestly I'm, I'm digging through my mental database and I can't remember we're just gonna flip them over we're gonna pop them out and we're gonna try to clean them up and flip them over hey Overdrive RC ordered a trail runner. Spare element front axle. I'm telling you, Overdrive RC, try it with the with the with the IFS one. It's kind of it's it's oddly enjoyable. Like, yeah, it's the performance is somewhat limited, but it kind of it kind of helps make it. I don't know. I'm gonna, I'm definitely gonna do. We're, we're gonna have the comparo of IFS one versus IFS two, so that we can see side by side. I still haven't held them up side by side to see like how different do they look. I'm just glad that the that he has the non kit XF. So that aside from the two main output gears, which are nylon, 
metal, 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 metal. It's just, it's just all metal up the chain. On the XF kit, this gear is plastic. And instead of a slipper, they give you a slipper eliminator. And I, I don't want to trend too much towards the negative, but I feel like that's a recipe to help people break parts so they have to break more parts. Uh, do we get a little field trip at some point to see the shed progress, or is it technically challenging to go walking about? Uh, I can do it in a in a video, but I don't know how to leave the building on on streaming. I'm I've I've only figured out streaming to to a degree. <laughs> I I don't know. Uh, supposedly, uh, there's a way I can set it up to where I can operate multiple cameras. I don't know how that works yet. We'll get to that. I'm pretty happy if the if the mics are in level, and basically everything that we're using right now, aside from the mic and the camera, everything else is different from last week's stream. So I'm just... Oh, let me check my frame. Yeah, we have dropped one frame. So the improved internet is is definitely an improvement because we have... We have spat out so far for people who love technical minutia, and who doesn't? Uh, 73,000 frames of video so far at 30 frames per second. But yes, the, the, uh, the shed is coming along quite nicely, and unfortunately, ooh, there's a lot of... Th this is a pad that I would probably replace if I had a replacement for it. You see, there's a lot of metal embedded in it, uh, instead, we're just going to flip it over and we're going to make that the new outside. Because I do, I do like a little, I do like a little bit of a slipper, like a little, a little bit of slipper action, not, not completely locked out. So here's our jumble of plastics. We're going to try to remember to put the bearings in the correct places. So yeah, it's just. We'll see it again as we put it together. Oh, I... D I gotta go dig in my own trash! Because I threw this gross thing away, forgetting that I need to extracticate the uh, screws that hold the halves together. I would love to be able to figure out how to live outside. Now, this is a metal building aka a delightful Faraday cage, so the the Wi-Fi doesn't get very far outside the building. But I I will I will you know what? If it is if it is figure outable, I will I will figure it out. We went from really bad internet to really good internet, so there should be far fewer instances of me uh, stuttering and stopping. Ah Mike Cross and Lee Jordan have just appeared. They have appeared in the chat below. Uh, Mr. Cross, down far away in the potentially mythical land of New Zealand, but it was in all those movies with the dragons and the hobbits and stuff. So I imagine that that's just documentarial, like that's just what it's like there. There's a package on bound, inbound from the United States to the mythical land of New Zealand that has some stuff in it from the canyon. Uh, I have absolutely no idea how long that will take to get there. Also, to whom it may concern, I shipped out about half a dozen envelopes at the same time uh, with stickers in them. Some of them may be going to people who have gotten stickers before. So if you get a if you get a second set of stickers, be like, oh cool, I got more stickers. But uh I have absolutely no system in place for tracking who I've sent stickers to and who I haven't. So I don't have a problem. We still have I haven't even touched roll two of the stickers. So we still have over a thousand stickers. So it's not a problem. If I'm sending people multiple batches of stickers, I've also been going uh, pretty ham on, you can kind of see them right above Roy Kent there. Uh, I, ha I still have about a dozen uh, shock stands 
that are painted and just they just don't have their clear sealer over them yet but they're if essentially they're they're getting ready to leave so if anybody is interested in one of those or if you have sent something in and I have neglected to send you anything in return or you were just like oh I would just love to have one of those then let me know and uh an email to yes it's all true my uncle bred the dragons in those movies I knew it see this is the stuff that they try to hide from us uh so if anybody wants a shock stand, stickers, anything like that, it's the Crawler Canyon at Gmail address. Just shoot me an email, and I will get something sent out your way. Oh, great. Just another uh, delivery delayed email from Amazon. That's how, that's how you know it's a weekday. Oh, uh, it was it was scrolling past. Okay, uh, Seabart Customs uh, uh, SC said, uh, oh, wait, have you figured out the gestures in Sonoma? I have not. Uh, <laughs> uh, we have, I have a delivery coming Tuesday. Excellent. If you have a mesh setup, you can add a booster. Okay. So the re the, the way we got internet in here is I've got a big old, well, it's on the bench right behind me now because I'm waiting for cables to come from Amazon so that I can update my whole Wi-Fi situation inside the building. We put a mesh system in the house, a TP link. I think it's the Axe 5000. And uh, got it at Costco because it was reasonably priced. So the Axe 5000 going in the house freed up the Linksys. I think it's an AC1700, which was the multi-phase or whatever it's called router that I was using in the house. So I moved that out here, and that combined with the Ethernet over power setup that we've got going is what's getting me the, the speeds, the ability to have dropped. We're still sitting at one frame. We've dropped one frame. So everything is better there. And then after I had put all that stuff in, my my wife goes, well, this mesh thing, couldn't you just get more of those and like put them outside and just continue the the, the Wi-Fi out throughout the yard? And I was like, yeah. Yeah, I probably could have. So it's not ruled out. Uh, I do want, to, I, I would love to be able to have Wi-Fi outside because I spend, I probably spend more time out of doors than I do indoors. I almost, I almost, I almost threw that away too. So yeah, we're, we're not ruling it out. And I believe one that may have scrolled by, uh, okay. Paint booth ready yet? We need a video, a uh, how to video on paint. It is one of the very first things that will be completed install as soon as the storage shed is done. Because if the camera in here was more mobile, and I could show you what it looks like over in that corner. It's horrible. It's horrible. It's absolutely horrible. There are so many things that I don't have room for because we're... It, it seems insane to say that we're outgrowing a 25 by 25 building. This is a two-car garage that we're in, basically. And I just... There's, like, boxes of rigs piled up. There's, if I want to weld, I have to put this tool away. And if I want to use a table saw, i got to put that stuff away. And... We, we've we've got to we've got to do something. I'm tr I'm I'm working towards clearing up space, and it involves building that uh that shed, and we've got rain all this weekend. So I'm hoping by this time next week that shed will be done, so that in the next live I can be like, it's finished. And we've cleared out, and we have room for all the rigs that are completely dominating the end of the bench right now. And, and uh, it'll be, and it'll be, everything will be wonderful, and nothing will go wrong. Yeah, I, I really need to do. Yeah, the axe is is, is Wi-Fi six, whatever that is. Yeah, and then I had to buy cables, like more Ethernet cables for hooking up the stuff in the house and hooking up the stuff out here. I don't know what, like. All my cables in the house were still Cat5, and I thought Cat5e was faster, and then they were like, no, the standard now is Cat6, and then you gotta get Cat8. And I'm like, well, I definitely don't have 40 gigabit. I have half a gigabit. Oh. Uh, Mr. Mr. Scrivener, if you, uh, if you send in some pictures of uh of your fresh paint i will put them up on the community board i want to see the people want to see we want to see 
I haven't painted anything other than uh, shock stands. What, what was the uh, the warlord? When I painted the warlord body, that was the that was the thing I painted most recently. I didn't even check the bearings, but they they seem okay. I think I think we're gonna hold up. We're gonna get we're gonna get this put back together. Yeah, I uh, so the mesh thing. Uh, we were running on, there was a terrible router out here. Oh, I think I took the trash out, so it's already gone. Yeah. It was awful. It was awful. And, uh, that mesh thing, I mean, I get it. It definitely appeals to my inner Luddite because you plug them in and their lights blink and then you get your phone out and then your phone is like, would you like me to set that up for you? And you go, yes, I would. I would, I would like you to do that. And, uh, it's like your Wi-Fi mesh system is ready. And, uh, my kid, my younger on a good day was lucky to get about 40 megabit in their bedroom. And now they get like 300. So we're, we're feeling, we're feeling, we're feeling pretty all right. Blue smeared nonsense question for the Canyon massive. I have never painted Lexan. I'm familiar, I'm familiar with the idea of painting it inside out. I'm, I'm used to painting model aircraft with an airbrush and compressor. Any tips? If you're already, if you already have a background in painting with a compressor, your, your work is, is all but cut out for you. It's going to be much easier for you than, than someone with no experience in painting at all. Now, Lexan does need a specific paint but it also doesn't. It needs a specific paint. It needs polycarbonate specific paint, which acrylics are very close, but impact resistance of paint, even stuff that's painted with polycarbonate specific paint, the paint can chip and crack and flake off if the surface isn't prepped correctly. So painting from the inside, yep, Ed Scrivener jumped ahead of me, uh, prep with, to, with flat clear first, and remember you're working in, in reverse. Yeah, if you paint the inside with either PS55 or, or, if I can find it, uh, depending on what locality or region you are, Duplicolor Vinyl and Fabric, this is Gloss Clear, HVP115. If you paint the inside of the body with this first, you can use any paint that you want over it. Because when I do things like paint the interiors for, for rigs, I just spray it with this, and then I paint it with, with these, with just full car craft paints. I just go over this stuff. All it needs is a base layer of something that is designed to stick to polycarbonate, and it is my belief that polycarbonate paints are just this stuff. Because when you see a body around here, unless it's in some sort of exotic color, like, for instance, this is... This is Duplicolor Silver uh, Vinyl and Fabric Paint. Painted on the inside and the outside, and then topped on the inside. So the fenders are black with Duplicolor Vinyl and Fabric, and the inside is all blacked out with black Duplicolor Vinyl and Fabric. It is my go-to for anything except, like, cool and neat colors. Like, if you want metallic blue, uh, metallic green, red, you know, fancy, any kind of fancy color, eh, just get Tamiya cans or, or, or Tamiya bottles or, or, any of the, or any of the polycarbonate-specific stuff. I have not had the best luck in the world with, uh, what is it, Mission? Eh, the acrylics from now. Eh, maybe it's just me, but uh, I, I, don't, I, I, I haven't had good results with it, so I just tend to stick to the easier stuff. I know about messing up paint jobs. Ah, yes, 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 yes. A certain someone uh, remarked in the, in the comments that he knows about messing up paint jobs, and what's funny is I was just talking about that this very day today as uh, he said he had his color picked out and I and I made sure to say you uh you need to back that with vinyl and fabric silver and then he neglected to do that and that uh that paint was falling off in a hurry because uh yeah I just saw one on Reddit I opened up Reddit this morning and a guy had done a kind of a a sweet like it was a little bit Iron Man Ivan Stewart paint job on a looked like a cliffhanger cab. And somebody in the below asked, so what did what did you use for paint? And he said, I used those bare spray cans uh, from Home Depot. And I was like, oh no. 
That's that's not going to look good for long. That that stuff's just gonna, that's just a nam that's spray enamel that's just going to fall off. It did look really good though. So I mean, if he never drives it, it will it will look it will look good forever. <laughs> Brandon says it fell off super fast. If I remember the, the photos correctly, the paint was falling off like immediately. Like as soon as it went out and started driving, the paint was falling off. That must be one of the top ones. I've done this a couple times, so I'm just kind of absent-mindedly. I don't. I mean, I guess I'll add a little bit of grease, but there was definitely there was definitely too much grease in here. And I only put a little bit of grease on here to, to mesh with these guys, so I don't know how it got so much in there. I have an ultra body to paint, and I want to do black stout scout stencils on the side, gray body and a pearl white roof. That sounds amazing. Uh, a painting on the... Uh, I want to do black... I have an ultra body to paint. Oh, Okay. Nine bolts, what I was trying to figure out is if you were saying you were painting it on the inside or on the outside. If you're painting it on the inside, you want to paint lightest, you want to paint darkest colors first. I almost said lightest colors last, but that doesn't make any sense. So you'd be painting it with a gray body and a pearl white roof. You want to paint the body first with the gray and then the pearl white. And then if you're, if you're going to back up the whole body with black, as most people do, I think... Any OE body is not going to be backed in black, but any body I do, I'm, I'm going to back it in black. See, I just cheaply taped around the inside because then light doesn't shine through the body. I hate when light shines through the body. So if you're going to back it in black, you're going to want to back your, your pearl white either with white or silver. Uh, that will stop the black from muddying the color. But yeah, gray first, then the pearl white. Then you can back the whole thing. I would just say back the whole thing in silver and then back the whole thing in black. Just a light coat of silver so that the black doesn't muddy up the lighter colors. I don't have to answer, but I'm, I'm in Temecula or Lancaster area. Uh, I would be, I would honestly say I'm probably right in the middle. <laughs> I'm kind of halfway between Temecula and Lancaster, honestly. Kind of in the middle of that. Inland Empire. We live, we learn, and we repaint. Yes, we do. I've lived the paint flake nightmare. Oh. Crawler Life uh, says they could not find vinyl and fabric silver in any store around here. Uh, if you have o o o O'Reilly, O'Reilly is where I go, and they tend to have the most colors as well. But I never, I, I never know. Like, we're... I, we're a global audience. We're a global collective. So I don't know. I could be talking to people, and, and there's there's other brands too. But uh, I know I know Sem Lacquers S E M makes a vinyl and fabric, but I uh, I can't get that here. So I just that's why I just tell everybody, oh, Duplicolor, because round here we we can get Duplicolor. I, I just remembered that we we lost a screw today. And now I have to dig around until I find one that's the right length. Hey! Dang. How long is this? Is it okay to talk about other two YouTube channels we found? No, absolutely. Go for it, man. I, uh... I will... Oh! Ha <laughs> ha! Ho! 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 Speaking of other YouTube channels, I did indeed. I sat down couple days ago and I uh, I watched I watched a video where a particular gentleman compared the compared the uh, new ascent fusion against a stance the infamous video where the stance was fitted with VXT twos and the 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 the, the ascent fusion was fitted with megalithics which it was not explicitly stated in the video but if those megalithics didn't have 3D printed inserts in them, I would be, uh, I would literally be astonished. And yet, 
when I look through the comments and people are, are, are saying, well, I guess I know what rig I'm getting next. Uh, were they not watching the same thing that I was watching? Um, that stance, which you, you all know, that looks conspicuously clean. You all know that I am no great fan of the stance, and I tried to tell everyone loudly, uh, if you're in the market for a stance, buy a VRD. That stance... That stance... With inferior tires. So what? I, here's what I think people didn't know. They couldn't look past the fact that those VXT2s were just doing the slip. They were doing the... Wah, 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 wah. They were just grinding and sliding. When those VXT2s would grab and hook up, that stance was kicking the uh, copyright poo-poo caca out of that Fusion. That Fusion looked terrible. The Ascent Fusion is ruining everything. And let me elaborate on that. Uh, the Fusion is a good thing. Fusion. Fusion, good. But now when people say Fusion, oft times they're talking about the Ascent Fusion. And it was already a semi-ruin because it's an Ascent Fusion and I drive a Subaru Ascent. <sighs> Red Cat... Red Cat trying to ruin everything. Well, maybe not trying. Maybe doing it incidentally. I don't know. So. Yeah, so it's 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 pretty easy to work. As a matter of fact, I'll, I'll, I'll rescind that. It's not, it's not pretty easy. The XF is the easiest gearbox to work on. You don't have to mess up your pinion spur mesh. You don't have to unmount your motor from the motor plate. The motor plate just comes off. And then we put that back in. I thought about putting more grease in there, but honestly, there was so much grease that I don't... He sounds like baseline again. I don't even think that there was any need to add grease. So we'll just... We'll just slap it back together with his very conspicuously shiny bits. Have any of that? <laughs> hey. Um, oh, uh, to anyone who sent me emails and is wondering if I got the... Hold on. Let me see. I closed my email client on the computer without even thinking. Um, I have gotten emails from Neil Daniels, Crawler Life... Bud, Bud and Ollie, and uh, Faith Goodwin sent another uh, one in. But Faith Goodwin knows my email address. They sent some emails. Some stuff like that. Big old BRX026 by six. Are those Max Grapplers? Are those, look at look at those. Look at those. Those Max Grapplers. Max Grapplers. Look at this thing. Look at this. Look at this big old thing. That's a big old thing. I love a six by six. Everybody should have a six by six. How many of us would be found in the spam folder? The Crawler Canyon one is really good because the Crawler Canyon email is young. It's very youthful and it's not, uh, it hasn't been jaded and sullied by the world. So it doesn't, it doesn't throw a bunch of stuff into spam junk. I wish it would throw some stuff into spam junk because apparently right around when I hit a stellar uh, 7,000 subscribers when i hit about 7000 i started getting emails from those who know those who know will know the seo people from the search engine optimizers and there's one that no matter how many times i hit the little unsubscribe button they uh they want to uh they want to like they want to like imagine they want to uh they want to manage my channel and uh and and show me to more people and etc and i'm like i go uh i go full bobby hill at that moment i stare at my email and i go i don't know you and uh and they're not going to touch my purse i don't know them and they're not going to touch my purse i also don't think that my search uh engine needs to be optimized i don't know uh because 
a gr- I, I am far more comfortable and I'm this isn't just this isn't just a thing uh I I am very comfortable with a with a nice gradual increase in viewership it's, it's great it's great because we are and I, I I throw this around widely to to the 93 ish of you out there and myself we are a Oh, yeah, that's probably right. Uh, we are a, we are of similar minds. And I feel like when I post videos on certain topics that attract, that are externally attractive, and people are drawn in by those videos, they are drawn in by the, the keyword search. Basically, search engine optimization. And uh, they might not be up to speed with with how stuff go around here. And uh, that's how we get a lot of people that get really mad that I don't like everything. Everything, uh, all apologies due to, to, to Unikitty and the rest of the crew in the Lego movie, but everything is not awesome. It, it's not. Because if everything is awesome, then the word awesome doesn't mean anything. He's back. He's back and he sounds like baseline. He's got a little gr- he's got a little he's got a uh, <laughs> uh baseline's got that stereotypical little uh, like a two pack a day sounding man. I'm not I'm not a hundred percent sure what gears what the mesh of what gears are making that uh, but that's just uh, that's just how he sounds. Oh, Ed Scrivener from Dry Stone Walling. Let me check again. Let me check again. Well, now I have 17 under new mills. Uh, Sol Trippin, Guitar and Pedal Co. Uh, Neil Daniels, Carl Arfitka, Bud and Ollie. Um, and now, who was that? Ed Scrivener. No, I have not. I have not gotten one from you. Let me look at just Crawler Canyon. No. No, I'm not. Right now, right on. Not everything has to be great. That's absolutely right. It uh, Greatness, uh, good and bad, are explicitly subjective terms. Uh, you cannot... And it's, it goes back to the dark and light thing. There is no light without dark. There is no, there is no good without bad. Uh, so if everything is awesome then awesome doesn't mean anything. And I stand by that. And and the fact that everything isn't awesome makes the awesome things awesome. It makes it makes the things that are good that much better. So there's nothing wrong with that. If everything was great, we would have no reason to seek out variety. I've lost the little wooden pin that stops baseline from sliding out of his compartment and hitting me in the head. Looks like it might be sinking. Ooh. I've seen maybe two awesome things in my lifetime. The SR-71 and the space shuttle. I have seen both of those things. But I have also seen... There is also... Let, let's let's not forget. That would be awesome things made by dudes that make awesome things. And yeah, those are definitely up there. But I challenge you. I think... I think, with maybe some few exceptions, every human being upon first glimpse of the Grand Canyon uh, is it almost leaves you speechless like you almost just go I can't I can't take in the majesty of all of this all at once like I don't I don't know what to do with this and uh, we took the kids and we went and saw Grand Canyon a couple of years ago uh, they were still kid-ish they weren't like full adults like they are now and uh, they they shared that experience. It's one of the few experiment experiences that you can be almost sure to share with your children because a lot of times you think something's amazing and you show it to your children and they just the eyes just glass over. And that is called parenthood. So <laughs> for anybody out there that uh, isn't a parent, that that's that's my rapid that's my very Cliff's Notes summary of parenthood that you. Uh, you, you show something awesome to a person that you made and assume that they will also think that thing is awesome. And 
boy, it uh, it really does just just punch you right in the guts. Yeah, like Butthead says, if you don't have stuff that sucks, you wouldn't have stuff that's cool. That is the paint. Sal Trippin says painting has been the bane of my existence. I, I don't. I honestly, okay. Aside from artists that paint things, I don't know if there's any element of painting that's actually like enjoyable. Like for me, like if I have to paint, you'll notice that all, like this is stained and I I sealed this, but there's no paint on any of the <laughs> items around here. I, I painted that, but. I, painting the best part of painting is when it's done and then and then you're done and you don't have to paint anymore we painted like she needs to be painted again like she's wearing a lot of her cheap rust-oleum paint off i just can't i can't s summon up i can't summon up the the, the 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 strength and the desire to do it like the best part about a painted body is when it's done oh Jay Leeson, uh, can you please explain the difference between the size of Outrunners that makes 3520, 3545? I know it's bigger, but I can't work out benefits. Okay. It's just think of it in terms of 540, 550. Okay. Do I have two different sizes that I can show here? Yes, I do. Okay. So this, this contraption, this is a 3530, and the two numbers just refer to this way, this way, 35. And 30, right? Like a, this is a 540 motor, AKA a 3650. So 36 millimeters, 50 millimeters. A 550 is usually about 10 millimeters longer than a 540, right? So then here we've got a 3542. So you got a 3530 and a 3542. So 12 millimeters, about half an inch longer, but the same diameter. What that means is that the bits, the little bits that they wrap the wires around are longer. The longer this gets, the more torque the motor makes. That's, that's, just, that's just basically what it is. It is also going to consume more power, and that power consumption really goes up. I don't know what it, I don't know if it's exponential. I don't know if it's logarithmic. I just know that it moves up a lot. Like, between this 3530 and this 3542, and this is a 1700, and this is an 1850, this motor will consume probably double the wattage of this guy, maybe up to triple, which makes your considerations of what you're going to use for a speed control more critical. I forgot that I had a Ninja that's not in a rig. A rig's got to get a Ninja soon. we got to put this Ninja in something because I've got a, a Rhino as well. I've got builds coming up. You know, there's always builds coming up. There's always builds going on. But yeah, the longer the motor gets, the more torque it's going to make. And you kind of get a very similar uh, effect when the motor gets bigger around. But we're pretty limited in size. In some rare cases, you can get up to like a 42. Uh, and uh, anything bigger than that, and you're talking like, like six six scale stuff like that can get bigger. I think my Kraton has a forty five eighty five, which is enormous. Uh, I, I let's put a forty five eighty five in a crawler. I would love to see it. Oh, it, and I wasn't looking, dude. David Hiscock. I would Niagara Falls is one that I would love to see. I have been east of the Mississippi. But one time in my life, uh, immediately out of high school, I went to Washington, D.C. and Ventnor, New Jersey. When I learned that all of the squares on a Monopoly board are real places, I went to Ventnor, New Jersey. In like 92, 91, might have been 90. I think it was 91. But I got to see Washington, D.C., where I was distract I was uh, mistaken, not once, but twice, as a German tourist. I had a lady approach me on the mall in Washington, D.C. and ask me if I spoke English. And I said, yes, I do. <laughs> what I did not tell her is that is the only language that I speak. The first, Ty Joe says, the first time I saw the Grand Canyon was at sunrise. I stood by the kissing tree and photobombed thousands of people's pictures. That's, that's fantastic. 
Uh, I got to see the Grand Canyon at sunrise via bicycle, and it was freezing, and it was amazing. Yeah, <laughs> three SBRC. I paint houses for a living, and even with that, the best thing is about getting it done. Yeah, there's a lot of things in life where it's not about the journey, it's about the destination. And painting, for me, is about the destination. It's about being done. Like, a lot of times with building these, with building rigs, uh, there's sort of a, there's almost like a disappointment when something's done because that disappointment comes from the knowledge that now you can't, you're done. You, there, you, you, you don't have stuff to do anymore. So like, I, I, I kind of, I, so I, I kind of forced myself to cherish those moments. Like I needed to replace the, the top end of baselines gearbox. So that's enjoyable. I don't view it as, Oh God, no, no, no I gotta do maintenance. Uh, I reserve that instead for when I have to work on beadlocks and I don't feel like doing it. I have a set of beadlocks that instead of standing here doing nothing, I should be taking those apart uh, because I I'm not taking those tires off of Ratchet and I need to move his rims over. Okay, where am I going? Those parts, it's done. How about a trailer build? I would love to build a trailer, but... Like, where do you even start? Like, I haven't tried brazing yet. I think if I welded something up, it would weigh 18 pounds, and, the, and only Jolly Green would be able to tow it. But yeah, it's, it's not something that I am averse to at all. I just, I wouldn't even know what to start. <laughs> Mistaken for a German. I don't know what it, I don't know. And, and, and here's the thing. I don't think outside of Washington... Uh, DC, I don't think anyone's ever mistaken me for being German. Dick Van Dyke. There's, oh man, let me tell you something. Let me tell you what YouTube has brought to me as I walk over here to get Ratchet from his perch. Because I should be doing this. The, the number of people that I have been told that I sound like, man, it is... It is, it is something else. I didn't know how many people I sounded like until, until I started, well, I guess until I started doing YouTube videos and talking in those YouTube videos, because I, I sound like a lot of people. AR60s are servo and axle and four link. I, you're going to have someone in the chat is going to have to, uh, is going to have to answer you that because. Unfortunately, I don't know. I don't think have uh, I don't have anything AR60 based. Yes, Ed Scrivener says yes, but I do want something AR60 based. And then I keep seeing people say that the AR60 is an, an effectively abandoned. Like Axial's not making them. They're getting more difficult to find parts for. And then I'm like, oh well, do I? Do I want that? Now, where are his tires? Right there. So, I mean, I guess... I guess RB14 is an option. Rift, AKA Rift Axles. And, I mean, I guess... Other forms, other variants of the AR60. Like G-Made GA60... Uh, GOM axles, but if I'm going to do GOM axles, might as well just buy a GOM, right? I mean, if anyone says that I remind them of AVE, uh, I would, th that is, that is, that is a hundred percent a compliment because, uh, you know, hazard fraught and like, like he's got the he's got like his own he's got his he's got his own dialect going we used to dig through that now see to me you sound like jesse dollamore i don't know who that is and ed helms i've gotten ed helms more than once but i don't i don't think i i don't think i sound like ed helms I wouldn't be insulted if I sounded like Ed Helms. I've gotten Seth MacFarlane, too. And uh, I don't think I sound anything like Seth MacFarlane, except maybe, I don't know, uh, I'll do, like, the... 
the pattern of diction, like this, he 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 has that very specific tempo, the tempo of his speech. I can see that every once in a while I get a, I get a Seth MacFarlane tempo. But to me, Seth MacFarlane always seems like he's in character. So I'm not sure if I know what, or alternately, Seth MacFarlane is never in character. So all of his characters just just sound like what he sounds like. One of the one six of one, half a dozen of the other. <laughs> I'm I'm waiting for that. I'm waiting for uh, my cross to finish. Is hanging out with a mate. Speaking of the way of sound, my wife has absolutely no interest in RC whatsoever, but she reckons she could listen to you for days. She turned to me once and said listening to you was like hanging out with a mate. Uh, that I take that as a great compliment because if someone if someone with no interest in the toy cars, which I get, uh, is interested in listening, then I don't know. That's that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I have a I have a, I have a broad appeal. I do, I do sound exactly like that guy that built a a giant insane uh, crawler thing in his backyard, which uh, every time his wife sees it, she says, "What am I going to do with this when you're dead?" Um, that I I sound exactly like that guy. Stealth X with TRX four axle straight fit, or do I need extra things? Um, I think we have one. Do we don't we have a? I think there's got to be a Stealth X with TRX four axles. Uh, it, the only problem that you will have is if you are trying to use the TRX4 drive shafts, they won't want to fit. But if you use Element or Axial or Vanquish or Cut to Lengths or whatever, uh, the, you'll just bolt it up. And uh, be aware, if you have something lower KV, you are going to want to KV that boy up because... There's, like, no gear reduction in a TRX4 gearbox. All the gear reduction is in the portals. And then there is gear reduction in a Stealth X. So your gear reduction is going to be, like, with the stock gearing, with 1887 on there on a Stealth X, it's got to be close to 100 to 1. Uh, <laughs> it is a massive amount of re mechanical reduction, which is nice because it frees you up to use like a 2250 or a 2500 outrunner or a fusion pro is perfect for that but if you were to uh, power it up with something like a uh, like a 1200 it will be the slowest thing you ever saw like like one and a half miles an hour I just realized he's sitting on vanquish hexes and uh, these brass hexes are not they're they're not going to fit so. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to change. Oh, but they're not scale hardware, so that's nice. Those are not. Those are not going to fit. So I'm gonna have to do something about that. I, I would, uh, Mr. Daniels. I would definitely say that uh, a, a Dick Van Dyke comparison is a is a is a compliment. That that dude. That dude's a national treasure. Like, hey, sometimes it doesn't work. 1200 kV or 1800 kV fusion se um I'm trying to see if I missed a, a lead up to that uh, if you're running straight axles 1200 if you're running portals 1800 that's my general rule of thumb now this the the low end control on the se is good enough that you can get away with an 1800 on straights if you want that extra wheel speed. If you don't want or need, and it's more it's more often than not, I see that as a need issue. Like, do you need extra wheel speed? If you don't feel like you need it, then just get to 1200. It is going to be a little bit less powerful because the higher KV is more powerful. But, bonus, it is going to be more efficient and your runtime is going to go up. That's how baseline can work all day long. On that 1200, even running a, I think he runs like a 24 tooth pinion. He can, he can go all day. What are you planning on using the old school Panthers? Right there. That's why, that's why they're getting remounted. They were so good. And 
that's the thing. I mean, there's there's that there's always that little thing in the back of your mind that's going, uh, what I call too precious, to treat anything too precious. It's a tire. Uh, I would be doing a dis. I would consider it to be doing a disservice to the Panther Cougars uh, if they weren't being used, because they were made for a reason, and being driven around on rocks on a toy car was that reason. So they will fulfill their life's purpose and they will last as long as they last. And then, I mean, it's not like he's living a dark life. He's got Tusk LPs waiting in the back. When I start, I see. <laughs> uh, yeah, never let, never let, never let a lady pick out the colors because now then, then that's, then that that's hers. That was her choice. He will never show his face, but if there was a lineup of the hands, only we <laughs> we all could spot him out. Yeah, I do not have I do not have hand model hands. I just I don't even know. I, I'm of that age where I don't even know where that came from. It was just it was just there, which is intensely comforting. Is the Ascent still a reverse mullet? Uh, basically, yeah, because they didn't change any of the geometry of the axle. So yeah, it has worse clearance in the back. Better clearance in the front, worse clearance in the back. Ah, yes, yeah, a question. I have a 9 on my 1400 with TRX4 axles and just bought an 1850 to swap it out with a bit much. No. Uh, TRX4 axles have a lot of uh, as a two, if memory serves, uh, two point three six to one. So they have like, they have fifty percent more gear reduction than a Vanquish portal. So you can get away with a lot more KV, uh, which is nice because you can't gear down very far. Nine forty five. Well, nine forty five is five to one. So you can both gear a TRX four gearbox down pretty far, and you can get away with decently high KV. I think 1800 is kind of a sweet spot, but I like the I like the Fusion 1200 so much. I want to build a mullet. What would be the front and rear axle? Capra portal for rear what up front? The Capra portal in the rear, the only problem you're going to arrive at is because the Capra is a really wide axle. I went the easiest, laziest way I could think of to do it, which was AR44 front and AR45 rear because they're the same width. They take the same hexes. They take a lot of the. They take the same ring and pinions. They take all the same parts, and they just they just go together. Um, I had had a thought. Uh, oh, oh, okay. There is another one. If you haven't started outfitting the other stuff to your mullet, if you get a TRX four rear, and any straight front that you like, you could use a Vanquish F ten. You could use an AR forty four. You could use an AR forty five straight. Whatever you like, you put that in the front, and then you get a too low, the fake too low, and run it backwards. If memory cert, hey, if memory serves, it puts you at right about thirty percent underdrive, because you're now underdriving the front end thirty percent, but then the rear end is being underdriven like sixty percent because of the the massive reduction in the TRX4 portal. That is the most economical uh, mullet I can think of. TRX4 rear, too low in the middle, and a anything, any straight axle in the front. Um, oh, uh, while testing rigs, are you all, you are often noticing that a rig is over or under damped? Is really like, oh, how, uh, how do I know? Okay. So with a crawler, the relationship between the oil and the spring is far less significant than it is with something that has to fly into the air and then come down out of the air. If you never have to jump something, you have a lot more freedom in setting up your suspension. So I would trend more towards overdamped. He's perfect. I don't I don't want to I don't want to toot my own horn, but he's perfect. What you basically want to see is when you push this up and let it go, you don't want it to fly back. You don't want it to go bang. You want it to move very linearly like he does. He's very soft to the bottom. Also, 
you don't want it to go that's overdamped. We have a pretty big window. We have a big enough window that I would say you can put 40 weight in most everything and be fine. It might act a little slow or it might act a little quick depending on the spring rates and the overall weight of the rig. But 40 weight, if you can only afford to buy two bottles of oil, uh, 300 CST and 500 CST. And if, if necessary, uh, half of each. Whenever you get shocks, element shocks, GTS, any of them, they're going to come with those little unmarked bottles of oil that are very approximately 300 CST, like 27 and a half weight. 40 weight in a big bore will slow it down a lot, but they still work pretty good. So better to be overdamped than underdamped because if it's underdamped, you'll have a wheel up like this. And then when it unloads, it goes whack and shoots it down and it can upset the whole vehicle. So a little bit overdamped is better than a little bit underdamped. And it's not until you get way overdamped that what will happen is it will actually slow how fast this can go up. So then you're turning into a skateboard. Oh, or uh, more appropriately, you're acting like the front end of, an, of a red kind of set because they run an internal spring and they run an external spring and the damping never, it never feels right. The shocks need to be completely taken apart and rebuilt and use none of the red cat parts and then they work okay. Enough overdrive can compensate for low anti-squat. Probably. I would, uh, 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 Irwin, is, uh, if, if the front wheels are spinning that much faster, so overdrive versus underdrive, uh, when we get into big numbers, when we get into that 30 to 40%, I can indeed notice the difference between big underdrive and big overdrive. I reverse the hand motions there. Big overdrive or big underdrive. Because big overdrive is pulling harder than big underdrive. You would think, oh, well, the, the front wheels are still spinning that X percent faster. Overdrive is actually speeding up the front axle. So the speed is increased over the relatively gear reduction aside over the output speed of the shafts of the gearbox. There's a place for both. And I can tell the difference in rigs that are using both versus one that's just using one or just using the other. The Phoenix is a really glaring example of it when you go into big overdrive and it just goes to 46% front to overdrive. It's like, it's like the second turbo kicked in because it's adding so much more speed. Wow. If if Eliminator RC in Canada still has Panther 2-2 two, two, uh, Panther Cougars, get them. Get them. I'm going to put a Fusion SE in my TRX-4. What KV you suggest? 1800. If you can afford, I mean, if, if, you're, if you're treating yourself, if you're buying yourself something a little nice, get a Fusion Pro. I mean, I don't know what they cost down there in the mythical land where the dragons and the, and the, and the hobbits are, but uh, the 1800 is great. And the 1200 is great. And the 20, uh, there isn't a fusion I don't like. I do want to try a fusion RTR, but I'm not paying $103 for one from Red Cat. But in a TRX4, I would say an 1800. Hypothetically, XCX10 Pro with underdrive added to the front, killing a bit of rear underdrive and yet still being able to underdrive the front. Oh, yeah, because it has that selectable, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Yeah. I used an AR44 portal kit. I can't remember. Yeah, there's a couple portal kits out there. And now there's the option you could go 10 Pro all the way around. Because 10 Pro now comes in both portal and straight. So you could do you could do all an all 10 Pro. I have inbound from Amazon, but not yet delivered. I am building up a set for an unknown purpose. I am building up a set of 10 Pro axles using zero axial parts, the non-axial 10 Pro axle build. There will be 10 Pro straights. And I resisted the urge to go full Chineseum and just buy pre-builts because I wanted to buy parts that are at least reasonably reputable, like from companies that I've heard of before. Uh, the other sock. What is the purpose of... Oh, did somebody already answer it? Yeah. Uh, the purpose of a mullet is rear underdrive and uh, more clearance in the rear. It's easier on exit. Also, uh, 
Torque twist, when you watch something twist, uh, it tends to be this corner. It goes like this. goes up like that. Burp. So you get that little body roll like that. That body roll is all but eliminated on a mullet because the, the axle drive shafts are basically spinning in the opposite direction. Oh, did I have to use the dual output? I can't remember. Uh, to any future mullet builder, uh, sometimes you will arrive at a problem where now one gear is spinning in the opposite direction. So on, on Clank, I had to get a gearbox with a reverse output for the front and then later found out that I didn't. I could have just reversed the ring gear. But uh, we, fi we figure things out as we go. Here's a Fusion Pro 2300 on straight axles and a three gear and a belt driving is barely faster than walking speed. Can also be because, oh, well, yeah. See, you were sneaking it down there. NIMS. Yeah, if you're running NIMS 2300 three gear and a belt drive. Yeah. Yeah, NIMS. N Nim, NIMS are definitely, I mean, the most obvious statement we'll make today is that NIMS aren't lipos. That is for sure. Not just in terms of runtime, but in just terms of output. Like how many amps they can throw out. The what? The what hours? A Fusion Pro is about two seventy here. Dollars? Nope. Nope. Mm -mm. Nope. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Is this the price you pay? We used to have some of the worst air quality you've ever seen. Growing up here, we used to say that we don't trust air that we can't see because that's how bad the air quality was. But you know what? I mean, I know where you live. It looks like a mythical land. They look like a mythical land to the point where they made a mythical land out of it. But good God, $270 for a Fusion Pro is, that's unbelievable. That's unbelievable. Ruby was $275 for the whole thing. Like, you guys got that, you guys got that island penalty. Oh, it's moving really fast all of a sudden. 40 weight in the VRD, I think stock is 30. Yeah, that's about right. 40 weight will be fine. I was searching the interweb for Panther tires. <laughs> God, I would love to try those. They made a red dot compound for a bit, and it only lasted a few runs. That sounds like clay compounds, the guys who do racing indoors on clay. There are some of the super aggressive clay compounds that will last literally one day, one day of driving. And they'll be and they'll be completely bald, and then the the blue groove tracks will have such high traction that they can just drive on the completely bald tires. That's a, a big air quotes around uh, off road racing, because if you can use slicks, what servos are three hundred ounce? Three hundred ounces is not hard to get to. Are you trying to stay down to 300 ounces? Because the midpoint now is about like, okay, Amazon is going to start at about what, 25? We're not going to see a ton of servos below 25 kg. I can't do that math in my head. That's 350 ounces. A 25 kg servo is 350 ounces. So around 20 kg, guessing, guesstimating here, would be in that 300 ounce area. That's not that's not what I would classify as enough. I'm gonna I'm gonna want more than that. 32 kg is kind of the jumping off point for me when I'm looking at a steering servo. And with the way prices are working lately, uh, I just tend to go 50s and 60s because there's not there's not that much there's not that much price difference. It might be the difference between a 45 kg servo and a 60 kg servo might be ten dollars. I'll just spend the extra ten dollars. I gotta make sure it doesn't get too far. Is it just me or do the Panthers have a rupture look to them? This is what I love about the rupture. The rupture has been so successful. It it is the I don't want to say Toyota Prius. Well, the Toyota Prius isn't an objectively bad car. It's just it's just a tremendous marketing success, right? Uh, people when they compare tires of a certain style. They'll say, doesn't it have a rupture look to it? But these fellas, these fellas predate the ruptures by probably close to a decade. These would have come out around the same time as these boys. 
And I mean, if you get into any of these sort of geometric patterns, they all kind of start to look the same. But why I would say that these do not have a, a, an explicitly rupture look to them. To me, the tread pattern looks like hieroglyphics. It looks like they have hieroglyphics on them. Maybe it's this little this little hook one and this little kind of diamondy guy. But the rupture definitely has tread blocks that extend all the way across. And this tire, if we get Teddy in the background, there's just an, a groove of nothing in the middle of it. I've never seen another tire that just has a groove. Even swampers and boggers. That's just a groove, an uninterrupted groove with nothing in it. So when you're driving them, they strangely, they almost bizarrely behave as if they're two. It's like you have duels on at all four corners. It's like a tire next to a tire. And I think they're doing, uh, I've said that the shoulder of a tire does a lot of work. It's like this tire has four shoulders because you can really do work with this midline. Tires need to get, make tires weird again. Oh, wait. Uh, 67. Oh, okay. All right. So it's just, it's, it's New Zealand money. So if it's 60 cents US to $1, so that's about 150, 160 bucks. That's not bad. I mean, a Fusion Pro here is $150. 179 euro. Now that hurts. Oh, I, be I believe Mr. Cross had sent me a page from Hobby City, New Zealand. Uh, even now knowing the exchange rate, that it's uh, uh, one, New Zealand, one New Zealand dollar is about 60 cents American. Even knowing that, things like, like a 10 Pro in there is like $1,000, New Zealand dollars. That is... Where's the other... How am I missing a... It's over here. Uh, we are... Oh, we're getting into it a ways. We're into it a ways. We dropped one frame. I don't <laughs> I don't know when that one frame dropped, but we've dropped one frame. Oh, you know what? We're going along. While, while I have this mess on the bench and I am uh, violently distracted, I'm going to put some things over... We're going to move Susan. We're going to move Susan for a second. Okay. Uh... Y'all know it. If you, anybody needs it, uh, let me know in an email. Shoot me an email. XP130. I even have the little book that comes with it. Uh, it will just sit here and gather dust, honestly. It's a it's a fine radio. Do not use it in the rain. Uh, treat it like a gremlin. Don't feed it after midnight as well. Uh, I just have no purpose for it. And related, uh, the, these fellas... The, the grabbers, tiny spoiler alert, who didn't know that the grabbers were not going back on Ruby? Because they're definitely not. Uh, they're just ventilated. They've been run twice. Uh, if anybody wants them, again, let me know. And before they go to the skewers, uh, I have no use for them. Uh, the Super Marshers from the FCX-10, perfectly competent trail, toler, t trail toyer, probably an excellent trail tire. And uh, the, honestly, they're not bad enough to commit to the skewers. But if I have nowhere to put them, the tire rack is pretty much full. They will just they will just go out onto the skewers. So if anybody if anybody wants any of that uh, stuff, just just let me know, and and, and we and we will we will facilitate. Knowing that this is a global audience, and that uh, if if you're outside the country. It might cost a fortune. Braden asks, what would you recommend for a first crawler? I will ask you, I will a I will answer your question with a question, which is, what is your budget? Let, let me know. Let me know what you have to spend knowing. Well, well okay. And while you're, while you're answering that question, let me tell you that here's things that I think people don't take into consideration. You are going to need a charger and batteries, which, thanks to Amazon now, is pretty cheap. Like 50, 60 bucks is probably going to get you charger and batteries. Uh, no matter what you buy, unless you're building from scratch, and 
uh, most first timers are either unwilling or, uh, or, or feel mentally unprepared to build from scratch. Uh, so you're going to have to replace tires on it. So you, you basically need to allocate about a hundred bucks a side that does not, uh, that is not part of the vehicle. So you've got, if you're going with an RTR, uh, you need about a hundred bucks off to the side that is not RTR money. Okay. Round 500 all in 500 will get you going because most that will get you into a lot of RTRs. And now I am trying to mentally run down in my head. What do I consider in the RTRs to be the best value knowing that I, I don't I don't really care for RTRs. I, I understand they're a necessary evil. 500 all in. That's a great that's a great budget, man. Because even with the hunter to side, man, it really makes it, it really makes me it really makes okay. Uh, what are you going to use it for? That that is a good question. What are you going to use it for? Um, I mean, Phoenix RTR is super tempting, but that's a little on the expensive side. Um, Element Enduro is fine, but the electronics are crap, and they'll make you hate yourself. Um, TRX for Sport, three sixty nine. You know, there's that there's that loyalist part of me. I guess it's a I guess it's a loyalist part. I would say TRX for Sport RTR, um, because it will be absolutely bulletproof. Like you can be as dumb to it as you could possibly want to be, and the sway there, the the sway factor there is the included electronics. What I call the RTR suite, the TRX4 has the best. Their radio is perfectly acceptable. Their steering servo is fine. The XL5 is the best RTR ESC out there driving a brush motor, and the Titan itself not bad. You can replace the motor and the speed control all in one shot with a Fusion SE 1800, which will cost you 80 bucks. And then you take your tires, which will come out of the rig looking like this. That is a Canyon Trail. That's what it'll come with. And then you're going to cut that middle row of lugs out like that. And then they're done. And you can run them on whatever you want for as long as you want, because in terms of an RTR tire, the the Canyon Trail is the is the best one. Nobody nobody's gotten close. And that yes, that a hundred percent includes the red compound Falcon Wild Peaks that come on the Vanquish stuff. Canyon Trails are just better. They're more versatile. They last longer. Base Camp is a good is a good one, but the TRX four is still standing above. You can trail with it. You can rock crawl with it. It you can put an LCG chassis into it. You can do you can do whatever you want to it. Uh, Andy Bernie, I have to disagree with you on one point. The as the ecto, about the ecto being the best bang for your buck because of the trailing arms. You're gonna end up having to link the rear end of that because you're gonna you're gonna get to a certain performance point, and then those grabbers, the general grabbers are not great, and then the electronics inside are the absolute worst. When I told people that we're looking into getting ectos, I would say get a, a, a get a trail a uh, a gatekeeper kit and put an ecto body on it. But now the gatekeeper kit is gone, so I would say get a builder's kit and put an ecto body on it or a Zool. I think the Zool's better looking than the ecto, but that's that's just me. Yeah, Braden says a mix of trailing and crawling. I if it's gonna be an RTR, uh, I would say. TRX4 Sport, if if they still stole the TRX4 Sport kit, I would say get a Sport kit and build it from that because it comes with the tires and the body. The TRX4 Sport get with, kit was such a good deal that they figured it out and they and they stopped selling it because at $299, it was amazing. Oh. <laughs> Anna Soming has been banned from the Facebook group for saying not nasty, naughty words about the Red Cat Ascent. 
but it wasn't a fusion. Same vehicle. Going secondhand isn't a bad idea, but if it's if it's your not your first RC, then you kind of have a better idea of what to look for. But if it's your first RC and you're buying used, you really don't know what you're getting into because you don't know how hard that thing got driven in its pre in its life before it met you. So if you if you if you're in an area with a strong used market. That is also an option because people can let things go for less than they're worth. But it is, it is a big, it's a big seller's market right now. I have definitely noticed that. And I see stuff selling for not just more than I would pay for it, more than I would recommend anyone pay for it. Hopefully I mounted those all up as the correct sides. How do we expect to push and ask for progress? If we can't say something is rubbish, 100%. Speaking of the Zool, any new changes to Zobazu? It's funny, you know what? It's funny someone should mention Zobazu. He's right over here. So the gentleman behind uh, Zoku, the Zoku man himself, he came by to drop off the stance so I could rant about the stance for a little while because he knew I wasn't going to buy one. And while he was over here dropping some stuff, some stuff off, he uh, he he elevated uh, Zobazu to the next level of shiny blingness, which is carbon fiber rails. And uh, I mean, compared to the aluminum rails, I wish I had weighed one next to the aluminum rail. And it was obviously a direct bolt on because they're just his identical rails. Just these are in carbon. And I was like, well, he needs carbon, you know, for for the bling. Not, not for any other reason. I don't, I don't believe it's going to impact his performance uh, much in any way. It, it will reduce sprung weight a little bit, and that's great because he does not have a ton of weight added. He's just running AR-45 straights. But uh, I haven't even driven him with his carbon rails. He does settle down less, and I'm desperate. When I was fitting his, his new chassis rails, I was trying to remind myself, why does he have the small springs in the front? and big springs in the back. And I, uh, I never came to a conclusion. I don't, <laughs> I don't know why he's like that, but, but he is just, that's, that's the way he ended up. And maybe the performance is at a, is at a level where I was like, hey, yeah, we'll just, we'll just run with it. I'm afraid that if I take anything off and remove it and try to change anything, I'm going to make it worse. And I don't want to make things worse. Thumbs up for the sport kit. Wait, there it is. Come on. There we go. Okay, see, now we're getting in more information from, from uh, Braden. He's built battle bots in the past. Braden, you are here to for by the power vested in me, by the followers, the Canyon Arrows, and the 404 of the Canyon. You are here to for uh, forbidden from purchasing an RTR, and you are now you now have to buy a kit, uh, which opens up your your area a little bit more. Um Element Builder's Kit would be great. You can make whatever you want out of it. Builder's Kit 2, whenever they're in stock, that's 250 You can outfit the rest of it for the other 250 unquestionably. You can put a full body, you can put just a cab, you can make it into whatever you want. Uh, kits are becoming more and more scarce, but, uh, yeah, if you've built battle robots before, you have no excuse for, uh, for buying an RTR. If there were still TRX4 Sport Kits out there, I would just say get one right away. But uh, I don't know if you can. I, don't, I, like they, I guess they just, they caught on. They knew it was too good of a deal. Oh, does anyone have an Axial Unimog body? That is that is one of the new unobtainiums of, of RC. If you manage to find one of those, you have done something truly special because they are so scarce... It is almost as if they never existed at all. Because I searched far and wide for one, trying to find one when I was building up Jolly Green, because I desperately wanted him to be a raid truck, like with a race in Dakar, with the Unimog front, and I was going to build the big custom box bed for the back at a styrene that would probably be broken into pieces by now. But uh, that was my plan, and then he ended up with two J-Concept Lloyds, because you cannot... You cannot get a uh, you cannot get a Unimog. 
You can get a little Tamiya Unimog, which is a tiny little thing, but you can't get an Axial Unimog. How's the email count looking? Ooh, I don't know. Let's see. Oh, well, there's some emails. No, but we have like, there's like 20 emails in here. Like tw There's like 20 emails. Phoenix Kit? That's not bad. It'd push him over 500, though, for sure. You'd be over 500. It's legit. It's okay. Legitimately, uh, let's let's be honest. Let's be let's be true, simple, and plain. As was that DJ Quick? Was that DJ Quick? Real simple and plain. Uh, a Phoenix is going to cost you about 800 bucks. By the time you get a kit outfitted, the kit's going to cost you 400 bucks. It's going to cost you about 400 bucks to put it all together. That's just that's just the way it is. Just the way it is. Uh, you'd save a little bit of money uh, putting together a VRD, but a VRD is a much more singular point of focus. Phoenix are great because they'll do you could do you can build anything out of it and make it do whatever you want, and the body's beautiful. But uh, yeah, I don't know about a Phoenix for a first build. I don't know. Um, what is the number one cause of bead lip ripping off the tire? Oh, um, RC family. Uh, so I'm, so when you say that, do you mean like it's ripping out here? Because if it's ripping out there, uh, manufacturing, I can't, I can't, I don't know what else would cause that to rip out right there. Like, uh, Falcon Wild Peaks will rip there because their compound is so soft. But I don't really, I don't think Enjora S4 is up there with Vanquish Red in terms of gooey rubberiness. So if they're ripping, uh, then they didn't, they didn't make that, they didn't make that tire good. Are negative G chassis really worth the money? I, I can't say yes or no. I don't have a negative G chassis. At least I don't think I do. Uh, if you can afford a battle bot, you can afford a vanquish. Treat yourself. I, I, I gotta, you know, I gotta agree with two geek to be cheek on that. If you're, if you're, if you're battle botting, then, uh, yeah, you can, you, I, I understand a budget and not wanting to blow that budget out, but, uh, yeah, you could, uh, you can build a Phoenix. Now you can easily put a thousand bucks into a Phoenix too. Also. Why is there no, why is there no Ford ice kit? Wouldn't it be just as easy to make a Ford ice kit as it does to make, I don't like that body or the name, but why can't we get it as a kit? Why isn't there a Ford ice builders kit? No. Oh, that's not a bad idea. That does remind me though. I'm on here says you should put the stylus from your new charger in the bear box. Keep it nice and safe. So he is, uh, he is referring to this right here. Okay, here's what we're going to do. I just had it. I just had it. Okay, hold on. Let me, uh, let me wipe this board off. Okay. This is a whiteboard? This is a whiteboard. Okay. And I'm going to get my big whiteboard marker. I'm going to get this Lex, this Expo low odor, low order marker. And uh, we're going to, we're going to write, we're going to write right here. We're going to write. Guess me. Okay. I'm going to write a number on this board. A number between 1 and 100. Okay. Easy peasy. All right. I'm going, I've written the number down on this board and I'm going to place it face down right there. No trickery, no tomfoolery. First person. To guess that number, uh, I give you that charger. How's that sound? So, okay, there we go. We Jordan with 82? No. CV Dub 17? No. So uh, 0 for 2. And you and and once you guess, you've guessed. Okay, numbers coming in. Oh, there it is. Jimbo Creations. Uh, uh, and you know what? This works out for all of us. Because, so it's it's right there. Uh, I don't know what the delay is because there's still numbers are still pouring by. But uh, the what was that? One, two, three, four, five, six. The seventh guess. 
Uh, he hit a 37. Uh, that is the gentleman who uh, owns both CJ Joe and the basically the two Jeeps. The CJ and the FMS Rock Hobby Willies. So I will just slide this under the box that the Willies lives in. And then, uh, guess what? He's taking a Charger home with him, too. But don't, uh, don't, don't be, uh, I should, I should write on the back of it who it goes to. Don't be, uh, don't feel crestfallen if you, uh, if you, if you didn't, if you didn't win it. Because we, we, we still have this one. And, uh, we'll give this one away in like, I don't know, like 45 minutes or an hour or something. If, if I've forgotten, then remind me and I'll give that one away too. Did you use Chief Amazon in the locker room? Oh, that is, okay. Uh, Bouncing Noise has put in about, uh, about the ripping bead. Uh, oh yeah. Oh, uh, uh Camo Crawler about the TRX Force Bit Kit. They're absolutely right. If Jenny's has them or any other part house, you can get TRX4 axles pretty cheap. It used to be that you could get a pair of axles and a TRX4 gearbox for about 125 bucks. And then you could get a full Injora chassis kit for like 60 bucks, and you've basically just built it for around $200. So you could scratch build it. You would be basically building this. You'd be building what Kronk is. TRX4 axles, TRX4 gearbox, it's in there, and these are the Endura axles. And he is quite capable, and he was just built out of stuff that was here, like I didn't go out of my way to build him. But yeah, you can absolutely build up a TRX4 without the sport kit being around. Why the sport kit was such a great deal is it came with a body, it came with tires that weren't glued, it came with foams that almost work, It, uh, but, but the tires... And the body were the big selling points because over in here, the the tires are alarmingly expensive and so are the foams. How's the tuning going on CJ Joe? CJ Joe needs to get out onto the course again. Uh, I just, uh, I need to finish building that building is what I need to do. Yeah, no need to send it, I'll pick it up. That was why I said that it worked out great for me. I don't have to mail that because he's going to be coming here to pick up the rigs anyway. So it's savings all around. Oh, and then the thing about the sharp lock rings. That I had not considered, but yes. Some lock rings on some wheels are alarmingly sharp. So yeah, that could absolutely do it. Yeah, I'm going to have to drill these hubs out to fit the Vanquish-style hexes, the hexes with the snout, which is, which is, which is fine. I'm not going to do it now, but I'm going to do it. I'll do it at some point. Oh, there are, uh, uh, Brandon says that there are still some axles in stock on Jenny's. Mias Portals for 42 pounds on AliExpress. That's a good deal. Uh, the Mias Portals just came back in stock on Amazon. So I just saw them on Amazon again. And they're 80 bucks on Amazon. I don't know what the uh I don't know what the pound conversion is right now. What are you guys like a buck and a half? Buck 40? Something like that. So let's just say that it's about 20 bucks more to buy them on Amazon, but I can have them tomorrow. So I just, I look at it as expedited shipping. Would you pay $20 for overnight shipping? Well, that's kind of what you're doing on Amazon. The stuff costs more, but you can have, sometimes you get it same day. So I just roll that into the cost. Like I had to order a servo and that servo will be here tomorrow morning because we had a, uh, we had a death in the servo family while trying to finish a video this morning. And, uh, I don't want to talk about it, so I'm not going to talk about it, <laughs> but it's dead. It is 100% dead. It will not power up. So, oh, let me, moving along here. Negative G are very good kits. I've had a TCV one for about two years. If you four link the LCG, the only motor is a 3542 that will fit. Is that, is that true? Maybe. 
Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. Looking down at that? Yeah, okay. Who pointed that out? That That's an important point out. Uh, crawler life, yeah. So it didn't even occur to me because I'm running a pretty short outrunner, but now imagine there's a 550. That that link is going to hit. That link might hit a 540. Now, I mean, I guess in, uh, you maybe could bend a link and get it to come to the outside, but that's eh, a real pain. But yeah, I had not. I had not taken that into consideration on the Enjora LCG. Was the servo a direct power? Yes, yes, it was. Really? Oh, I for okay. So Jimbo, the gentleman who won the uh, who won that charger, uh, does something with numbers. Economist, something like that. So apparently he incepted me, and he knew what number I was going to guess because statistically 37 is the best guess for a number between 1 and 100. So I am uh, I am as predictable as your usual sample group, I guess, without intending to. And that's... Yeah, and I did answer Bill Truitt in saying, yes, the servo was indeed direct power. What's that website that you can get the TR for us? Uh, JenniesRC.com. Egg Harbor, New Jersey. Um, yeah, 78 euro uh, pounds on Amazon in the UK, but it takes three weeks to get to me, so might as well save the money. Yeah, if I was operating from that, yeah, if I could, if it was cheaper, and, and you guys probably get stuff from AliExpress faster than we do, so AliExpress is a great resource, and, uh, or ordering from me, us directly, man, they ship fast. Man, do they ship fast. Enjora Direct is pretty fast, too. Using that same chassis on my chair, exploring using it. So it'll, so it'll clear a 540. No issues. Okay. Brian Massey has confirmed that the Enjora LCG for TRX4 will clear a 540. Is Inception cheating? I don't know. Maybe he made me think of that number. You can use the SCX link kits to mount to the outside. If you're not, you have to bend the link under the motor. Yeah. Yeah, there's a... Uh, I don't know if he's still in the in the chat, but Erwin over in Belgium has uh, homebrewed his own BTA mount for TRX4, and it looks pretty sweet. So uh, I have some TRX4... I have some Arful Dodgers servo axle mounts for TRX4, and uh, I am I am still... Planning, I'm still planning on using them. I don't, I don't have anything for putting under them or over them yet. But we'll, we will get there. Did I ever direct three uh, S power the blue case servo? I have not, and I keep telling myself I should do that. But uh, my Reedy ESC is on the way from Wisconsin. I will build the world's strongest and finest collections of the worst motors and speed controls known to man. The Reedy SC480 and the Reedy Crawler motor. Right now, so far, all I have on hand is I have two uh, 540s and one 550. I'm trying to get a mix. I'm trying to get a mix, but I think I think it's going to mostly be 540s because that seems to be what comes on most of them. Someone says, "Has anyone used any metal axles from Intigy? Let me tell you about Intigy. So Intigy has been making parts. We we had the uh, uh, ability to buy in Jora to buy Intigy parts way back, like two thousand eight, and they make the real, the finest of buttery aluminums. Which, like, if you clipped a pipe, you would just bend it. Like their aluminum is soft, and I don't know if that continues to now, but we are. We as a group around here are a lot of, uh, we're very wary of Intigy parts. Maybe they've gotten better. Whereas like Enjora was making junky parts like two, three years ago. And now they're making great stuff. Like the, the genuine Enjora wheels are some of the best cheap bead locks out there. Their tires are good. Their insert, their silicone inserts are good. Enjora's doing a lot of stuff. Intigy, 
I don't know. When I see an energy axle, I can't make myself buy it. I have too many dark memories of just bending into G aluminum pieces into pretzels without uh, like a huge amount of effort, just bending them. So I, I don't know. So I definitely haven't used metal axles from energy. Yeah, they're ridiculously cheap. Yeah. Oh, GPM is the new Intigy. Oh, that's good to know. It's 140 bucks for two rift aluminum axles for, versus 140 for one for one triol. Now, what I can tell you is that that triol axle is uh, is I wish this would make a thing is very nice. That uh, and I, I'm still I'm still waiting for the silver front triol axle for rift to become available because robo kitty has had the the flipped rear you know so you can run four wheel steer has had the flipped rear for like two years now and i still have not been able to find the front in in clear as they would call it i've seen the black one once or twice but i'm not putting a black a metal axle on the front and the silver metal axle on the back they have to match <laughs> that is the beauty of the energy, though. The parts didn't break. They just bent. Like, bent a lot. Did you try out the wider silicone inserts? Yeah. They're in, uh... They're in a couple of vehicles right now. Uh, they're getting the, the proper test. We cut a set and put it in something. My brain is turning to mush. What did I put them in? Have I decided on a figure for the MB Scaler yet? No. They are still hard to find and extremely expensive, but related. One of you wonderful people, and I can never remember the... I can never put this name on this thing that's scrolling. I can never put this name together with the name. They wrote it on a piece of paper. My memory is terrible. Someone was kind enough... To send in after they saw how much how gaga I went over the uh, the Willys MB, they found the the body, and they they sent in just the the body. They sent in a body. So one uh, one of the much future builds of the canyon is going to be to build something that goes under this, or just adapt something to go under this. And I feel like it's got to be full. I feel like it's got to be full leaves. So we're just gonna we're gonna go full leafs on this, gonna go proper like like scaly scalar out of it, or four link I don't know, and they were also kind enough to include. We'll just we'll just poke his head out. So this one is getting uh, Gen General Patton himself. So we've got a driver for this one. There's his hat. He's got the combat hat and the and the fancy hat, uh, and it's got his uh. Got his riding crop, some binoculars, and uh, that one is going to be set up. But I mean, there's there's so many things, and can you believe they package when you buy just the body, they send it in the same thing that the whole rig comes in. Rock Hobby FMS with the with the packaging, the elite packaging. So yeah, I don't know. I don't know what we're gonna put under there. Oh, Chukik Chubishik has sent in a figure for the MB Scaler. I wish. I wish the mail would get there. I mean, I can run out and check the mail, but it'll take me a minute. Oh, two, uh, you sent in the last. So you're sending in another figure, other than that one. Man, it is. It is a good looking body. I, uh, will you ever tell your story about Holmes hobbies? I, I consider it like, I would consider it to be in poor taste because they refunded me for the speed control 
and I consider it to be the, the matter is closed. And I will go so far as to say this, that uh, I got an email from one of the guys at Holmes that after they had sent the the refund and I had emailed back and said, all right, it's it's I consider the matter closed, et cetera. Uh, he, he messaged basically saying the to the effect of uh, 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 I was hoping that you would mention something about, you know, that we gave you your money back. And I was like, oh, I don't like that. I don't, I don't like that. So were you giving me money? What, why were you giving me my money back? Because if you refunded the money and the part was faulty, then that's just how it works. Because I pay you for a thing and then you give me the thing. And if the thing doesn't work, then I get my money back. That's kind of how transactions work. So it was a, it was a, it was not a great experience overall. It was definitely on par with the experience that I experienced at the hands of ProLine some years ago. And the ProLine wasn't even about getting a refund. It was just about getting defective factory parts replaced. And they had a very similar level of customer service, and I was not fond of either. And in this day of customer service, I basically see it as there are the three, uh, what do they call it, the three, true out the three true outcomes. You can have good service, bad service, or no service. I would rather have no customer service over bad customer service. Just never respond. That's fine, you know? But what I got from Holmes was poor. It was very poor. As poor as anything that I've gotten in recent years. I have one. I have this one. I don't know. Did did they ever did they ever make an independent front suspension Jeep? Does the Jeep body have a three hundred and thirteen millimeter wheelbase? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. So uh, I can fit most anything under there. <laughs> hush money. Yeah. Well, if they're paying me hush money, then they hush me real good. That's a much better experience than I've ever had with Horizon Hobby. I have never heard anything. I've never heard anyone say, man, Horizon Hobby was amazing. And here's the thing. Horizon Hobby almost gets away with it because it's like when you have to call your cable company, you know it's going to be bad. Or when you have to get on hold with your cell phone plan carrier, they have hundreds of thousands of customers. They cannot afford individual directed care. They can't look at us as individuals. We're just masses of numbers to them. So when I get bad service from Verizon, and oddly, I've never actually gotten bad service from Verizon. I've actually gotten really good customer service on the rare instances that I've had to contact Verizon customer service, which is crazy because they have tens of millions of customers. So when I am in, in the midst of a customer service relation with a company that has five employees, 10 employees, and you know that their customer base is maybe in the low thousands, guys, I know you're not getting 7,000 customer service emails a day. I'm just saying it's not that hard. I've run my own business for a, for a little bit of a minute. I answer a lot of emails now, and I miss some, but I'm not charging anybody, and nothing I gave that person blew up, so... I don't know. I'll hold myself to a higher standard because it's uh, it's well within my uh, purview and, and within my means to be hypocritical. So I will I will do that. The M151 was independent all around. Oh, snaps. Looks like we got to get another IFS1. <laughs> Build double independent Jeep. <laughs> it would be it would definitely be uh, more capable than in full leaf. Man, I do love an aquarium. Lumpkin, Lumpkin Mumpkins got to go to the aquarium. 
I love a good aquarium. You need to experience the Tamiya 3-speed. I have not, again, the Tamiya 3-speed seems to be the transmission equivalent of Verizon Hobby's customer service. I have never heard anyone say uh, anything other than, you, uh, you need to test this because it's terrible. <laughs> Ah, uh, yes, the the super the super marshers. And you know what? They're not they are truly not bad. They are probably they are this close. Let me see how little light we can get in between. They are that close to the like Baja boss. Like they are they would be in a, if you were to hot swap, if you were to not tell the guy you were doing it and you pulled the Baja bosses off of his Jeep and you put the super marchers on, he might not notice. Like, they're they're pretty close. I just, uh, I liked the look of it a lot better with that tire on it. So we went with that. And I know that the FCX-10 is never going to be the ultimate rock crawler. Uh, it's cool because you can turn the headlights on and off, and, you know, you can unlock your diffs and two-speed and dig, and it has all the things. And it's a really great rig. It just... Looking, oh, hint, hint. Hey, man, if, if you want them, th then you got them. I'll, I'll put them over here so that they're not they're not tempting you anymore. I'm on my third Enjora 7KG trying to set up the three-speed. Oof. So, so, you're, so what you're telling me, what you're saying without saying it, is that something in the linkage is constantly putting tension on the arm so that the servo is constantly under load. I always do a little thing. I can't do it with him because he doesn't have dig. There's nobody here on the on the bench that has dig. I do a little. I do a little wiggle. I do a little wiggle to make sure that when it's at one endpoint, it's not fully locked against the stop. But I also, you know, I've built it to me a DFO three RA, which was like building a clock, uh, truly like building a clock. It had there had to be twenty bearings inside the gearbox alone. It was insane. So if a, if a three-speed is burning up servos, I understand. So this guy has been sitting over here. He doesn't, there's not even enough room for him currently to have a garage. But, but he's just been sitting over there. And I put wheels and tires on him. And I mounted his, his camper shell. And... End of list. Like, it is so enjoyable to just to just drive it around. It like it makes me understand trailing more than I had understood it before. Like, if somebody said, "Hey, let's go drive our RC cars out into the woods together and talk about life," I, I would I would just instinctively grab the controller for that it's just it's great to look at and and i don't care i i something about fms fms rock hobby is doing some sort of magic like like oh, it's almost like they're drugging me where i don't mind that the performance will never because let, let, let's, let's look at it the atlas the fcx 10 the, the the 41 Willys MB, none of them are performers, but they're all amazing. They have X Factor out the wazoo, as one would say. And, I mean, just look at it. I mean, other rigs are cool. Ratchet is amazing, but that's a, that's a dang old K5 Blazer. And I'm not even a huge fan of the orange. I think the brown one is the brown one is amazing. Then a dead stop end of the movement and the way I have mine set up. I can't see where it stops. So I got a round servo saver like this TRX for shift servos. Yeah, and hopefully that fixes it. Yeah. How do you store tires? I have so many from 18th to 5th scale, and it's hard to store them neatly. So many of the tires are on a big rack right out of frame that I built out of wood and dowels. Then there are tires in Rubbermaid bins under the bench. 
And then there are like buggy tires, how I store my eight scale buggy tires. They are on 10 inch long pegboard hooks because the pegboard hook will hold four, will hold four tires. And right over out of frame behind the little element garage door, there's all the tires that won't fit other places. There are a, there are a great number of tires here, an, an absurd number of tires here. And I can't, uh, I don't know if I could ever claim that I store them neatly, but uh, they, the, the, the tire rack, which I wish, I think, yeah, we're zoomed all the way out. And this camera is running on direct power. And I'm, I'm afraid that if I try to tip it up, it's going to, uh, you know, oh, you know, maybe we can incept. Let me see. Well, this is, this will be crazy here. Let's see. Can we do this? Is this, is this possible? Okay, so there's the tire rack. <laughs> so this is how I store most of my tires. They're just three eighths inch dowels, and that's just some pine shelving. So that's that's what's out of frame up to above. But some of you know this; you've seen it before. But uh, that that's that's how that's how the crawler tires get stored. Hey, my brushless motor stunders under twenty percent throttle. Any tips, Dale? Okay, there we go. Ten. Oh, um, yeah, the motor's not censored. Yeah, you you need a censored motor. It's it's basically cogging because at very slow speeds, that motor, the speed control can't tell what position the rotor is in. So if you just add a censored motor to it of any kind, the it, that 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 low speed will improve dramatically. Uh but when you go and shop around for them, um you you're going to find that it's probably just going to be cheaper to go buy a Fusion because it's $69.99 for a Fusion SE1200 and it will give you low speed control that will make you go, that's not possible. So you, you may just end up with a with a Fusion SE. And then you can put that Town BL60 in something cool. Make it a strike of Zeke. Here's what I say uh, when, when I did the when I did the when I did the review of this guy. What I said is they didn't outright yoink a TRX4. They basically refined it because I don't know. I I think I pointed some of this stuff out in the video, but I have not removed the body enough to make the uh, body mounts not be excessively aggressive. But so we've got the magnetic power thing, so you don't have you don't have any power. You never have any power dangling, right? We have a clipless body mount system that is perhaps potentially too robust. But what we've got is I don't remember if in the video I had the rear fenders installed. The rear fenders are installed now, and the rear fenders are separate from the shock towers. Traxxas, are you listening? Because separate fenders and shock towers. That's a great idea. The servo on axle with the servo mounted vertically is a little wild. But even with this servo, which is certainly not very powerful, uh, it does great. There's also quite a lot of caster to it, which is why I think it steers as well as it does. And then the, the micro servo operation for the diff locks and the two speed and all that stuff is refined over Traxxas's application. Uh, we have a very similar saver mechanism, but they are more precise, like they're easier to set up. So there's, there's, yeah. Pudu Magoof says, they've done what Traxxas couldn't or refused to do for the last seven years, which is to update the TRX-4 in a meaningful way. Absolutely. It's like the TRX-4 2024 edition. It really is. And we have proof positive that's got a decent amount of gear reduction in it because, you know, everybody loves that Red Cat, which comes with a 42 turn uh, 550 and is still too fast. And this thing comes with a 21 turn 550, which lower turns, more powerful, uh, and is plenty slow. It's creepably slow. So everything, everything did, they did everything pretty right down to the little stuff the little stuff that other reviews which infuriate me don't point out i mean yes 
This is exactly how TRX for sliders go. But look, the hole in the fender with the switch so that you can access the switch when the body's on. It's just smart. It's just, it's just smart. They did a lot of smart things. Do I want to work on it? Not especially. I mean, the all-in-one unit is mounted right here, and it has seven plugs going into it. There's only four unused channels in an 11 channel. So we got four link up front, so we don't have to, there won't be any pan hard issues. They were like, well, we could try to mess with the geometry, or we could just four link the front end. Like, these are, these are smart decisions. There is some stuff that, uh, that it concerns me, like, how well does that show up? The linkage for the lockers, there's a section where the, the wire is just, ex it's just out in the open. So I don't know how well that is going to do over time. Like, is that going to get grimy? Is that, I, I don't know. That's stuff that I may never get to the point of, uh, of finding out, but yeah. Uh, I, lo I love all the stuff that FMS is doing recently. All these things, especially the new, the FCX chassis. Uh, if it, and honestly, imitation being the uh, sincerest form of flattery, if it's a knockoff of the at TRX4, great. Because they did it right. They did it, they made something worth buying. And it's beautiful. And I've mentioned it in other videos, I think. I don't know if I said it last time when we were talking about it, but the gentleman who was at the RC Expo said that supposedly this year, in 2024, so right now it's just the Blazer, they're going to be coming out with an LC80 version. And when he said LC80, my brain just blanked out, and I didn't remember anything he said after that. Because if they come out with an LC80, I will just buy one. Because I'll... Give me, give me a Land Cruiser! And I will take it. If it's identical to... And I'll probably do the same thing. It would get a Fusion. And it would get wheels and tires. Done. And I would drive it everywhere. Why has Traxxas still not offered Dig? Let's not just single out Traxxas. Why has Element still not made a rig with Dig in it? What's, uh, what's up with that? The Stealth Axe is already huge. Just slap a Dig on there. Yeah, the LC80. I'm 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 all in on the LC80. It is I mean, this body is very nearly hard body weight, which is perfect for me because it's very nearly as detailed as a hard body. I have one singular complaint about this body, and that is that they didn't back the inside of the body with black. So the light goes right through it. You can actually see the little you can see the little tape, the spot of tape on the inside right there. If that body was backed with black, I would have absolutely no complaints about it whatsoever, other than it should have an interior as well. If you're listening, FMS slash Rock Hobby, uh, give us an interior for all of your 10th scale bodies. And also, when you go to put it on, the body kind of tucks in. I'm most anxious to see how long the little, these are all decals, the chrome, the actual chrome stripes. Uh, I'm really anxious to see how long those chrome decals are going to, are going to hold up. I did see that, what was the one that came out and I called it the A-Main tax. I think it was this. So the FCX-10 is on A-Main now. And uh, I believe when it released, they bumped the price up 50 bucks over everybody else. And I don't, I don't know why that is. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. So th there's there's that boy right there. There he is. If we go up. $4.49? Uh, it's $3.99 everywhere on the planet. And when they did their first release, uh, it was $3.79. So we are getting to watch that inflation <whistles> really go up. I found out that saucing Injora tires from the inside and outside make them grow a few millimeters. Yeah, the rubber is probably porous, which would explain why some people have uh, have ripped them. It's so funny. LC80s are so common here. I'm like, what's the big deal? Well, listen, listen. I don't know. What do they call it? You, you guys are not, I, I can't say land down under. I know that the Australians and the New Zealanders have a, uh, you guys have like a thing? Uh, down there in New Zealand, look, we don't have that stuff here. 
We, there's a lot of stuff we didn't get. Like, if we see a skyline out on the road, we're like, whoa. Yeah, and then the rest of the world, they're like, so what? But yeah, well, we don't have those. So yeah, LC80 for us is, like, we don't have that. I don't know. Did how, Do you guys have these? Did you guys get these? So is this, <laughs> the LC80 is exotic to us, but down in, in New Zealand, is the, is the K5 Blazer exotic to you? I don't know. Oh, wait, it's scrolling up again. Does anyone ever unlock their dips? Yeah. And actually, if you can sort of train yourself to do it, it's like half dig. Because if you're in a spot where you're coming up, you're getting really steep stuff, and then you feel like it wants to flop the front end over, so you want to get more bite from the front, you unlock your rear, which opens the rear, and then that tire that's binding up won't have power going to it anymore. So you can, it'll allow the front end to pull over better. So yeah, unlocking the diffs can really be useful. It's just, it's a trainable skill. It's something that you have to, you have to get used to doing. It's not just going to be like, oh, I unlock my diff to do that and this. And yeah, it tightens the turning circle by about 30%, probably. I mean, dig tightens it by like 90%, but... This has got dig and unlockable diffs, so we can do both. <laughs> Mike Cross is killing it in the in the in the in the chat today. Kiwis get two things on their twenty first birthday: a beat up LC eighty and a dragon egg. Yeah, I mean you are really selling New Zealand, man. I mean we've all seen the pictures, we've all seen Lord of the Rings. It looks amazing, but now that we know LC eighty and a dragon egg. And yes, K5 Blazer ex are exotic there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Over here in the U.S., we got Pintos in Vegas. Yeah, we and don't forget uh, the whole AMC line, the Gremlin. My grandmother drove a Gremlin, a, a metallic blue Gremlin, but it had a V8 in it. That was a pretty sweet car. I don't know why everybody hated on Gremlins so much. Lee Jordan uh, is already bought his ticket. He's heading down to New Zealand. Uh, because it, either drawn by LC80s or Dragon Eggs. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if the Dragon Egg program is retroactive. I only just found out about it today. But it does sound pretty amazing. I would I would head down to New Zealand. I'm going to... Uh, this, this guy's just taking up the whole thing. I'm, uh, I'm thinking about getting lazy. And by thinking about it, I mean, I probably am. Which is, rather than drill out these... Uh, I'm genuinely just thinking about getting into the bin over here and just grabbing some different hubs. I had a 95 Silverado and I got to join a hot rod club. That's amazing. <laughs> that is amazing. New Zealand sounds more fantastical by the minute. Let's see what we let's see what we got. Okay, he doesn't need super deep. He probably needs like Oh, those are just like nines. They, no, they're not like nines. They are nines. They say nine on it. That a nice. I have never owned a truck. There, I said it. Uh, but I can get away with it because I've lived my entire life in California. Oh, man. I think these do fit. Dang it. <laughs> I guess I didn't need to change them. Because they look like they fit about the same as... Let me see. Yeah, they fit about exactly the same. I took the hubs off and I didn't need to take the hubs off. Yep, they sit down the exact same amount as these. But are those going through? No, they're bottoming out. No, they do need drilled out. Okay, good. Thank you for stopping me, because I would have put it together wrong. <laughs> Who just said what? No way. Man. I love that guy. What? No way. Oh, man. The one where he gets the buckets apart with the air nozzle? Aw. Oh, rent free in my head, man. I'm pretty sure Europe doesn't understand the pickup. Yeah, they don't do trucks, do they? They just don't do trucks. Like, what was it Jeremy Clarkson said? If you can sell fruit out of the back of it, it's a truck. 
Like, I guess the, the, the Europeans don't want to sell fruit. They, they don't want to sell fruit out of the back, so they don't understand trucks. Yeah, trucks are a thing over here. In California, uh, very few of the trucks are trucks. They're either lowered to the point where they're unusable or they're lifted to the point where they're unusable. Yeah, that's only a five millimeter opening. That is seven millimeter. Yeah, so I just need to drill these out. Do I? Hmm. Or do I? Banana cream pie or chocolate cream pie? I'm thinking both. Yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, that, that, that's, that's not, so here's, here's the problem. Here's, here's the problem that we just arrived at. So we're on Vanquish Stubs and they have that little step. There's the little step and it's right there. 699. We'll call it seven millimeters. The hole in these hubs is 690. So they don't seat down all the way. So then what I do is I, I get out the Ugga Duggas and I drive the lock nut down a and basically swage the hub onto the hex, which is what I did to his old hexes, which is why he had switched to these hexes. But these hexes have a little internal step, but they don't have a step deep enough to accept those damn Vanquish stepped hexes. So something, something got to get drilled. Oh, it moved a bunch. Ed Scrivener has a Skyline R33. Jealous. Have you seen how narrow some of the roads are here in the UK? Yes, I have. Like, like narrow enough for, like, say, a carriage being pulled by a horse. That's what a lot of your roads look like to me. We've got big old roads and big old cars to fill up our big old roads. They don't have the wide open spaces and cheap gas that the U.S. has. Yeah, well, everything's far apart here. Uh, the uh, what is it? There's a there's a great there's a great stitch on uh, on Instagram where somebody is like, oh, "Are where are you from?" I'm from like, and they say someplace in the U.K. and they go, "Oh, is that close to London?" And they're like, no. And then the guy's like, I need to explain something about Americans to you. Because apparently the town that she's in is like two hours away from London. And he goes, in America, two hours is close. He's like, in the Midwest, people will drive 10 hours to go to a football game. And I'm like, that's true. <laughs> uh, you know, we measure all of our distances here in time. Like, how far away is that thing? Oh, it's like an hour and a half. Like, the miles don't matter. It's how far away it is in minutes. Because... Like my wife has a short commute. She works. She works twenty eight miles from where we live. Uh, that's a short one. Thirty miles to us. It is. It is eight miles to the nearest mall. Like that's, and this is Southern California. It's all city from here to the ocean. But yeah, everything is far apart here, and the roads are big, and the trucks are bigger, and and I'm surprised he must be out today, but. But Kevin got an exhaust, put him as F-150, so. Luckily, I don't have to. Luckily, I have a very short commute. Uh, I just walk from the inside, and I, and I come over here. Have you considered doing raffles? Like, I run my channel to help fund shenanigans. I use raffles to run mine. Uh, I had never considered it. I didn't even know that was a thing. No, it's like like when we have something like like the charger, like I, I would just give it away. Like GT Power sent that stuff to me like unsolicited. I got a message from someone who uh, whose contact name I cannot recall, and he said, "Would you like some chargers and you can make videos on them?" And I was like, "Sure," knowing that I would do the videos on them. And like no matter how much I liked them, I'm I'm pretty well set on my charger setup. So I was like, "I'll just give them away." So that was why I was like, yeah, go ahead and send them. I do this with stuff all the time. Like, I can only build so big of surpluses of things, and I don't need two more chargers. Yeah, in Canada, two hours is in your backyard. 
Three SBRC says two hour drive. I'm leaving the country. Yeah, you can drive nine hours in California and not leave California. It's like a four day drive to cross the U.S. Uh, maybe if you're cannonball running it, you can get across the U.S. in four days. That's that's over six hundred miles a day. You'd have to drive. You'd have to drive ten hours a day. <laughs> So, yeah, you can drive across the United States in four days. You probably won't like it. Malls are making a comeback, I'm telling you. They're all outdoor malls now, but they are making a comeback. Our best roads are still like cart tracks, potholes galore. That sounds like Michigan, Minnesota, Wisconsin, basically any place in the upper, in the upper Midwest where the roads all look like they've been bombed by an enemy force that comes in the night. If you did a build and then we could get a chance to win it, yeah, I could. I mean, I could do that. I need a person. <laughs> I need a. By that logic, everywhere I'm, I'm on here says by that logic, everywhere in the UK is near London. Well, isn't it? Isn't it? If you can drive from from one from what what is it? Lands End to John Agrotes, uh, guys do that on bicycles. In, in a few days. What, like a week? It's about a week on a bike? So, I mean, yeah. <laughs> in London, two hours is London. Yeah, that sounds like L.A. We have that too. Driving to meet a ship. Temecula to Beaumont, Texas in one day. That is a distance that non -Ameri I don't think non-Americans can appreciate because the trip from Temecula to Beaumont, Texas is almost nothing. You just drive through nothing for hours and then there'll be a thing and then there's nothing again, <laughs> just nothing. There are vast swaths of the United States that are nothing. Just You just see nothing. It's not Frisco. It's the city. Yeah, I remember that. The locals. The only one that I don't get, and I'll, I will accept the LL Cool J song, is Cali. I have never called this Cali. Because it's so big, we just refer to it where we're from. If you are in a, if you are in a far off place, someone says, where are you from? You say, California. And if someone presses you further, it it splits in half. <laughs> you're either from Southern California or Northern California. If you're talking to another Californian and they ask where you're from, I would say I'm from the Inland Empire. Because most people know where the Inland Empire is because we're outside of L.A., but the Inland Empire is four and a half million people. So it's big enough. Hey, the G-Man Spider shipped. Uh... Uh, this is a question directed specifically to uh, sh the gentleman, Shaker MT. Uh, where did you order from? Was it HRP? Because I just got the email that they came in stock. So if you ordered from them, that, that would be why. I guess the, the, the ship, the container just came in with the G-Made. I am, I, am, I am most excited to see the G-Made Spider. A, because it's a kit. And B... Buffalo Bill's a good guy. Like, it's basically Buffalo Bill. I want to see how close he is to Buffalo Bill. I just say San Diego, but I live 25 miles away. Yeah, Joe, you know what? Like, North County? You're just North County? Yeah, it's all San Diego. To us, to us that are not from San Diego, you will know this all too well. You're traveling down the, f the 15 freeway, and there's that, the bridge with the big arch. To all of us out here, once we go under that bridge, San Diego. It's all San Diego. <laughs> Everything from that bridge to the border with Mexico is San Diego. I know they all have different names and Vista and all those places are down there. Nope, it's all San Diego. East County. Yeah, it's all, you know what? It's all San Diego. If you're, if you're, <laughs> if you're south of Temecula, it's San Diego. <laughs> Nothing in Kansas and Nebraska except a speed limit. That's true. Salt Lake has got one benefit, though. HRP is from Salt Lake. So if you order stuff from HRP, you get it really fast. 
presumably. Yeah, Shaker MT has uh, he has told me this in person that he was born he was born in the same the very same hospital that I was, Saint Bernardine's, which is now called like, ugh, it got bought by one of those. Uh, yeah, Destiny, something like that. Got by one of those health management groups. It'll still always be uh, St. Bernadine's. Well, 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 Mr. Steffi, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to go back and watch tomorrow because we're like we're like two and a half hours in. You've missed. I mean, uh, anything of import? I don't know. I don't know. Who who knows? But uh, yeah. Yeah, to me, Ty Joe uh, has California broken down into way too many areas. It's just NorCal and SoCal for me. It's it's the, the, and we ignore all the stuff in the middle. Like, I went to ba I haven't been to Bakersfield in many years, but Bakersfield is kind of in the middle. There's no there's no explanation as to why Bakersfield exists. Like, why did like somebody? Must have been traveling for so long that they got to a point and they were like, this is good enough. And they just stopped there. Because there's nothing for a hundred miles in any direction from Bakersfield. I don't I don't understand. I don't understand how it happened or why. And it's not nice there. It's very hot. It's very, very hot there. And I live in a hot place. So I Bakersfield, I don't Vegas, yeah, people gamble there. Sin City, all that. Yeah, it makes sense. But Bakersfield? Bakersfield is like inexplicable. Oh, oil. Yeah. I mean, oil will do it. I didn't even know they made, I didn't even know they got oil in Bakersfield. There you go. How dare you rascals, RC, what happened to Wheel on Wednesday? I am building a shed. I have to pour concrete and dig holes and screw pieces of wood together and it has to happen first because I need to get stuff out of this shed so that I can actually go back to work. I don't need, there are two rigs currently on my welding table and one on my table saw because I don't have any place to put them all. So until that building, uh, I don't know if wheels, I don't know if wheel and Wednesday is on hiatus until that shed is done, but it, it may well be. Because Wheel and Wednesday requires more time invested in terms of editing. Three cameras and a microphone and all the editing. It takes about four times as long to edit an episode of Wheel and Wednesday as it does to edit anything else. And we are in a, we are in a time crunch. Oh, Bakersfield is 100% desert. Greg, forgive me. Heselton, uh, knowing what you know now, would you buy the MT-12 radio again? The MT-12 is a fantastic radio. And if I were maybe half my current age, uh, I would probably be telling everyone to buy one. Because in terms of capability and in terms for the, the build quality and how good it feels in the hand relative to other radios, and I'm talking about it as if it's not literally touching my foot. This is a fantastic radio. It has this one little thing, which is a problem for me because, again, the biggest thumbs in the Western Hemisphere. But this feels good. The weight of it is good. That trigger feel is Futaba level. The steering wheel feel is Futaba level. The ability to put your things like dig here. These switches, all of... Everything about it is fantastic. I am not at a point in my life where Edge TX is a, is a thing. I'm not going to learn Edge TX. I'm just not. So, as I said, I have nine rigs programmed to this. Nine. And any go fast that comes in or goes out uh, will be paired to this radio. I will buy the cheapest receiver that money can buy at that given moment, and I will pair it to this unit, and it will power all of the go fasts, which is what it does. I do not recommend against it at all because the ergonomics are fantastic. And once you get through the, the learning curve is, so here's the learning curve for, I don't know, what's the easiest thing you can think of? Anyway, that, 
This is the learning curve for Edge TX. And the learning curve for like an RC4 is like that. It's almost intuitive, the, the, the radio links. And that's the reason why I don't own more MT12s and why I don't have more things, uh, why I didn't pour more into the MT12. The radio links, particularly RC4 and the RC6, are so easy to use and comfortable and simple and they cost $60 that it, it's impossible to beat for me. What about my body painting day? Oof. I do have another 10 days of painting, uh, another 10 hour painting day uh, coming up. So that'll be fun. Also, uh, also should be on a t-shirt. I wouldn't condemn my worst enemy to live in Bakersfield. Truly a city forgotten by God. That's, that's so good. I once drove, Jimbo says, I once drove from Seattle to San Diego straight through the whole five freeway, 1,200 miles in 17 hours. The five freeway was created by someone who hates human beings because you go in a perfectly straight line for what feels like a full day. And then you get right below the grapevine, which is a hill that goes like that. And the freeway just kind of jogs like that. And your body goes, what's happening? Because you've been going in a straight line for so long that suddenly you go, huh? It makes me yearn for the much slower pass and the much longer it would take driving down PCH, going down US1. Uh, because... It's just beautiful, and you don't want to kill yourself in the car. Yeah, and I was only driving to Lemoore the last time I was going up the 5 freeway. I missed something. Okay. <laughs> Fresno to Bakersfield. That's when I really want my adaptive cruise to work. Man, my wife refuses to use adaptive cruise control. Like, she is, like, staunchly against it. If I, as soon as I get to the bottom of the ramp and I'm on the freeway, adaptive cruise is on. Like, why why, why would I, why would I not? Let, I don't care that her name is Susan. Uh, uh, not unlike, we've got two Susans, because it's Sue Baru, Susan Baru. Uh, why would I not use adaptive cruise? She brakes a little hard and she accelerates a little hard. When the car that's in front of you pulls out of the lane like that, Sue Baru is like, ah, she just, she just goes full bore it. And the wife is like, what is happening? What is happening? And I'm like, she's got it under control. Uh, I trust her more than I would trust a Tesla. So you guys make me laugh. I drive 400 to 700 miles every day. Shaker MT is as the, as the kids today say built different. Uh, Mr. 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 Montana, I don't drive 700 miles a month. Uh, so 400 to 700 a day is crazy. Oh, yeah. Well, oh, speaking of which, Nautical says my least favorite part of the five is forgetting to shut off the AC where, uh, where the cows. Yes, the cow, when you get into cattle country. Uh, Lemoore is in the heart of that cattle country. There's a naval air station there. And it was raining. And the truck, we were behind a truck. And it was kicking the water up off the road. And it looked like someone had a hose filled with chocolate milk. And they were just spraying the car down with it. It was wonderful. It was absolutely wonderful. You managed to do that like, like you could do this maneuver where you would breathe without breathing. Because anytime you took air in, it was like, it was like a cow pooped on the dash and, and you were just getting to savor it in its, in all of its freshness. So again, I don't, I don't know why people, what, why do people live there? We have something nearby in a, in a town called Norco where they've built really expensive housing developments right near these massive cattle farms and cattle farms smell exactly like what you think castle cattle farms would smell like all the time. And there's also a water reclamation facility right down the road. So it goes water reclamation facility, massive cattle farms, and then these huge uh, custom home, 
complexes, like gated communities. One of them is called the Enclave. And here's the thing. If you live at the Enclave, any wind, any wind from the West, there's a cow in your house now. And those people are spending like, those houses are like three quarters of a million dollars. <laughs> CB dub. I always roll down the window when the kids are in the car and I encounter cow farms. That's, I like it. I mean, you know, it's the way it should work. <laughs> you get used to it. I, I would imagine the pig farms do smell worse, but we don't have those here. We, we definitely don't have those. Wait, did, did someone say, I saw one go, oh, Jeff at the temple said unboxing time. Is that your way of saying, did, did the mail come? Because if the mail came, I will, I will, I'll, I'll send somebody out there to get it. Mink farms? Where is there a mink farm? How do you... I have heard from uh, from going on the tour when my kids were in scouts, we got to do the behind the scenes at uh, Aquarium of the Pacific. I get to go to the Aquarium of the Pacific, and uh, the the person who was on the little the guide for the tour said that in their estimation, the otter has the stinkiest poop of anything that makes poop. And uh, for, and if they deal with otters all day, uh, then I'm gonna believe them. All right, here here's a here's a question, and I and I say unto thee, wah, wah. Um, here we go. We got this guy here, X2 Pro. Uh, Ty Joe just said, uh, oh, before I get to that, um, how do you feel about rear link risers? I think that in in many instances they can be useful because in many instances the we don't have options for moving our link positions at the chassis. We might have one or two holes. Well, we might have one hole, we might have two holes, we might have three holes. So, I was reading up on four links. We can use this guy as a uh, as an exhibitor. So, apparently, when you're setting these things up on a reel, on a 1-1 vehicle, they want this separation to be a percentage of the, of the diameter of the tire. I, I never knew this. I never knew this. I'm just going for, I want, I want the links to move in a specific way. And I don't think that Ratchet's rear link position is exactly optimized to what I want it to be. Because you can see he has higher at the front, which means, and here's him at neutral, but his anti-squat, his moment center should be way out here. But I think for his performance, I think his rear link needs to be shorter. So in terms of link risers, and I do, and he's running at the lower point on there, you'll see as well. Because... That is an element of the theory, of suspension theory, that really, I am i don't a thousand percent understand. I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know, I don't know all of it well enough. Yeah, I saw an interesting video on how rear link, on how link risers were actually causing the rear to compress. Yeah, I would believe it, because it's allowing the chassis more leverage over the axle. So I have a couple like misdirection with the Capra cage, but all element underneath. She was improved dramatically by a link riser in the rear. And Eddie, who is a Zoku Phoenix straight axle, got much better with the Boko link riser in the back. I tried every position and length that I could to get his rear links, and his rear end just never found... It never felt right. And then I, I want to say that someone mentioned to me that Boko did a link riser for the rear. And I was like, yeah, I'll order one. And yeah, it the way he transitions up this way, where the where the where the weight is shifting back to the rear axle, it really changed his handling, putting a link riser in the back. 
So 25% separation of the tire size. That's what it is. I knew there was a number. I knew there was a number. So I think what it is, is that that is why I'm not running out to buy a link riser for every rig. Because I think many times this is close. Like he got better coming off of these and going on to these, despite this being an, a high scoring tire because it got shorter. So it made this ratio just that much closer. So honestly, he might even be better if he was on 475s. But he's not going to get any better than than he is on this. Oh, and and uh, I don't think he uh, pointed out, Carl and I pointed out what it's on. Yeah. Yeah, so 40-inch tire would be 10-inch of link separation. So a 4-inch tire would be 1-inch of link separation. So we are on a... Gee, I wish I had something to measure tires with. We are on a 127... 126, 127 uh, tire... So our link separation should be what? In millimeters. 25% of 127. I can't do that. Uh, 127 times 0.25. Should be 31.75 millimeters of separation. And I am at... 28. So I need... So he should be better... We're going to use this GT power box so because if I move it, I'll forget that we're supposed to be giving it away. Now, Caden Rice uh, 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 raises an interesting question. Is the 25% of the tire size for geometry or is it to make sure you don't put them so close together that your axle wraps and rips your mounts off? Possibly. Possibly. Like I say, I'm learning as I go and my goal in life is to just pass on what I learn to other people because I uh, have been told by my wife and I paraphrase, but I only paraphrase to a, a, a degree. She, uh, she goes, she says to me, you have to stop talking to people as if they know everything. Uh, I get, uh, the, there's a streamer that does Twitch and is part of the Ogs cast named Boba. And Boba was talking at one point about how she what what she is particularly guilty of is she will be having thoughts inside of her head, and then there are, there are people around. She will start talking to those people as if they have heard everything that was going on inside of her head, like they're already a part of the conversation, and they'll just look at her like, I don't know what you're talking about. And I fear, I, I can't confirm it, but I fear that I do that sometimes. Uh, I just start talking about, I, I assume, I, I just, I assume from the outgo, from the get-go that people already have the base, the base level of understanding that they, they already know. And, uh, I'm, ch I'm trying to, I'm trying to do better. I'm trying to explain things more without sounding like I'm explaining things, if that makes sense. We are now at... Oh, that didn't raise it a whole lot, did it? Right there. At 30 and a half. 30 and a half. So we're one and a quarter millimeters below what would be considered optimum. And we're going to try that. So next time I'll try, next time I take this guy out, I'll get to try it with that supposedly optimal uh, separation. Now, with front link separation, if you ask me about front link separation... I'm just going to outright say, I don't know. I don't understand anti-dive nearly as well as I as I think that I understand anti-squat because uh, weight transitioning to the back is seems sensible, right? Because we're, we're climbing, so the weight is transferring this way. And I understand how this geometry moves the planes forward. 
I don't I don't understand how they control I'm like how is anti-dive controlled? Because I have some rigs where they're set up the front upper and the front lower links basically mount on the same plane. This guy has got more separation than others, and his separation is sort of due to necessity because I didn't design the chassis as intelligently as I could have. So we had to make some choices but i think his rear link honestly i think his rear link needs to be down back one hole and down two holes i think he has too much i think the amount of any squat he has is starting to take traction away from the front end too much traction away from the front end and i would like to shift some traction back that way but uh a, a big part of it is luckily these are toy cars so they are pretty easy to manipulate. So it's pretty easy to make a link change, try it out, and then go back to the other one to find out if you improved it or not. I'm running a TR, Crawler Life says I'm running a 336 millimeter wheelbase on the TRX4 LCG and a link riser. Yeah. So you know it's a triangle, right? We're all talking about it's all it's all triangles. It's triangulation. It goes out like this and then up like that and then down like that. It's a triangle. It looks more like a box, but it's a triangle. And the longer your links are, the less, when you change this, the less it changes the overall. Because your, your links are longer. Uh, 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 Stinky J says, look up a four-link calculator. I've looked up some four-link calculators, and here's the problem with four-link calculators. Everybody seems to have a different formula that they use as a basis because i have heard what what people shoot for re, re, the relationship between the length of the upper link and the length of the lower link it's all over the place some some guys are like don't exceed 70 percent some guys like i like to shoot for 80 percent or optimally 87 percent some guys are like i don't go over this percent some guys so so i don't know i really don't know 80 percent has seemed to work out pretty good for me and I tend to use 80% when I'm laying out a chassis because I have more options here. With, with us, particularly if you're us, the collective, and you're dealing with like this, if you've got a VS410, you have four different holes that you can mount your upper link into. And one is significantly shorter, like 12 millimeters shorter. And then in the front, you have two holes that you could mount your front upper link into. So we don't really have a choice. That choice was made for us. So unless you're building your own chassis, you don't really have freedom over where you're going to put your links. 3SBRC says, I've heard... Anti-squat in combination with overdrive is not better performing. Uh, it seems to be a thing that overdrive can cancel out anti-squat. And uh, hearing that makes me go, that sounds right. Because he runs 25% and a lot of anti-squat. Probably an amount of anti-squat, and there's no way to test this, but we can theorize. If we were to put in a gearbox that had zero overdrive underdrive in it, uh, I think his handling would get weird because I think that it's a combination of the two. I think it's an excessive amount of anti-squat putting his moment center. Like when it sits like this, it's where it's where they it's where the lines cross. It's like out here. It's like two feet in front of his front bumper. Which means we're we're taking tra we're moving the traction away in a way that might not be predictable, and my goal is to just learn to be more predictable with it. <laughs> Nautical, I have no idea what I'm doing with setup. I've just accepted if I buy quality parts with good reviews, the truck drive good. And uh, here's the thing of it. I tell people, don't be quick to make changes. You want to drive it enough. What is it? What's on what's on the side of uh 
miss of of Holly's mischief maker uh, seat time over everything basically. So for us, it's wheel time over all. Right, wheel time is the most important because if it's doing something that you don't like, I want you to be able to isolate why when it's doing it and and like what is that situation because the what it's doing and when it's doing it is going to help lead you to why it's doing it and that is that's where we get to the part where we get to learn together as a group because you might it it might be one yep it might be a one hole movement it might be dropping that link one hole and you'd go oh oh whoa 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 it's not unloading the front end on the climb like I thought it would. And then I have, I admit, I, I operate from a position of privilege where I'm surrounded by a bunch of rigs of all different kinds. So I can see the differences in behavior between two rigs, even between rigs that are very similar. Because unless they are identical, like if you took two stock TRX4 Sports or two stock anythings with no modifications to them, no two vehicles are going to drive alike. As soon as you, like if you take two absolutely bone stock zero changes to your X4 Sports, and you put megalithics on one of them, they are going to handle way different. And you would think, oh, well, it's just, it's, no, 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 no. The traction profile is going to move everything around. Because a tire and an insert, one tire and insert is going to like this, one tire and an insert's going to like that. They're all going to really behave differently. Then if you change the motor in it, or if you just change the pinion in it, the way the torque is delivered is now different. Once you introduce any variable, all the variables are now in play. So I try to make changes with the smallest, like I try to make a canyon change where I only change 10 things at a time. And it's partly a joke, and it's partly because... I've done it, an, an, not enough, but I've done it at a sufficient number of times that I have some inkling of what's going to happen when I make those choices. So I, I, I allow myself, I, I will gaslight myself into accepting that I can make more than one change at a time and it will be fine. Mostly out of laziness, but, you know, realistically, if you want to make a change... You change your wheel in, you change the inserts in your tires and then try it like that. And then you will be able to tell, oh, it feels too sift here, or it feels like it's unloading, or it feels like I have too much roll to the side. Finding what the finding what the cures are to each individual ale, that's to me, that's a big part of that is trial and error. A lot of this is trial and error. Every time I'm driving it, I feel like I'm learning something. There is a specific, Stinky J says there is a specific calculation of four links, but very hard to get there with obstructions. Yeah, especially on a vehicle with a frame. That's when you get everyone's opinions. Yeah, I would assume that there's like a, there's a math that you want to go with. That there's a baseline to start from. And more than likely, if companies are doing their homework, I would, I would guess that most stock vehicles start that way. They go off of some base of getting the... Traxxas had to have, in my mind, because their geometry is far better than most in stock configuration. <laughs> Lee Jordan? Yes, I will echo Lee Jordan quoting me back to myself. Do as I say, not what I do. Yes. Do not do do not try this at home. Uh, when I am using a drill press, a table saw, any tool of any kind, I say uh, the disclaimer is and all, all forever will be, this is not the correct way to do it. This is the way that I do it. And uh, nothing bad has happened yet. So we, so, <laughs> so we continue. Oh, I, I almost missed Allison Parks asking, what would you recommend for your first crawler? Jerex for sport. Yeah. If the budget is smaller, hmm, I don't know. Now, uh, Bouncing Noise is saying, okay, 
Many people talking about anti-squat link risers and so on, but you should also know the anti-squat only works when you're accelerating. Over underdrive works against anti-squat. I, I don't think it works against it. I think that it's, to an extent, it's trying to do the same thing. Because what we're trying to do is keep traction bias more to the front of the vehicle. Now, too much overdrive is just as bad as too much underdrive, which is just as bad as too much inch squat. And I'm more of the feeling that I think that anti-squat and overdrive slash underdrive can work against one another, which is why I think I get away with as much link separation as I do. Because I have tried it both ways, and if I were to just swing his top link straight down, and instead of being in the top hole, swing it all the way down and mount it in the bottom hole, it don't handle good. It will just it will just flip straight over to the back. So there is something to it. Yeah, you're dragging the rear, so the rear is squatting. The rear is yes, the rear is squatting, but the geometry is still there. So when he's up like this, his his moment center is still forward. This is so most likely what that squatting is doing are those instances where we either have a small overhang or a little bit of a vertical at the back axle, and we just can't quite get the tire over it. And I think that's because the geometry is actually pushing the rear axle down. So the rear axle isn't getting enough forward drive. And because of the anti-squat, we don't have as much traction on the front tires. So our traction split isn't quite right. So that's why I keep moving links around. Because I really do like uh, underdrive slash overdrive just for the tightness of the steering, just for tightening up the turning circle. And I like I like anti-squat or a, a, let's not call it anti-squat. Let's call it more, more link separation. I like more link separation, though baseline does great and he has minimal he has st all stock link mounting points so it's it's clearly not a hundred percent necessary but the the tweaking the the moving stuff around that's that's all part of it like that figuring out what's gonna happen or better still the one that I'm only right about maybe half the time is guessing what's gonna happen and then being wrong because being wrong is every bit as good as, as being right. Because then you know, you just learned. You learned what not to do. Learning what not to do and learning what to do are uh, two sides of the same coin. All right, uh, GT Power X2 Pro, we got to give that away. Um, I don't just want to pick a number because I'll get incepted again. And someone will know the number that I'm going to pick before I pick it. So we got to figure out how uh, how do we how do we how do we give that away? What's the uh, what's the meta for how we get rid of that? I'm opening my Amazon. I'm opening some Amazon packages. I'm just gonna throw them over here. Ten pro ten pro parts. So if anybody has a uh, a, a quality suggestion, yeah, Sal, uh, starting. Uh, with 50 50 no overdrive it's that's not a that's that's not bad nope people are just i said i'm not picking numbers oh wait, that's an age okay whoo i thought people were picking numbers again now i am curious as to everyone's age i want to see who ha ah, 69 nice i want to see 84 uh if chuck has to ask what's in the bear box he hasn't been in here long enough the, the the early elites, the secret members of the secret society, they know what's in the bear box. Hey, my network cables. That's for my modem. Oh, I'm sorry, for my router. And there's my drive shafts. And there's my power for my... They didn't even seal this. This, this wasn't even sealed. Like, I just opened it.
someone just said, <laughs> someone just said potato. There's just a bunch of numbers and then someone said potato. So we are all, uh, we are all, uh, very close in number here. Crawler life coming in. Uh, Oh, Overdrive RC now now holding on to. I, I don't think anybody's coming after Ty Joe for 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 the top of the spectrum. I thought Crawler Life was going to get the bottom. We've got a number of 37s. How did those people not guess 37 when I picked 37? They're all 37. 47. It's always 47. Yeah. Once you get to a certain number, you can just stop at that number. Oh, Nautical, 23. Look at that. 23. I thought all you kids were just about going fast. Average age is 50. I, I, I tell people it's the, uh, it's the new golf. My wife uh, agree, uh, decided as well that she was going to stop at 49. So... My wife's my wife's gonna be forty nine forever, and I go forty nine is an easy pick for you because you don't even look like you're forty nine, and she doesn't. Ooh, we'll be uh we'll be we'll be doing a we'll we'll video we'll video this one at a, at some point in the future. Uh, I was intrigued by this sold under many names. It's all over AliExpress and the and the like. But I found them on Amazon, so I got it on Amazon because it's like you're paying for, for shipping, uh, overnight shipping. So this, we'll see how this holds up. Uh, I want to test this gearbox out in something. Once I found out that it has 18% in the box, and then you, if you put in an underdrive, you'd be at 28, and then if you put in an overdrive, you're at 38. But I'm probably I'm pretty happy with 18 in the box, so we're we're gonna try we're gonna try this guy out on something comes with a skid and everything too, so that that'll be coming up. It is it is golfish, isn't it? We walk a little bit, we get to go outside. It's nice. It's less frustrating than golf. Oh, 84 was the year I was born. Well, that's less fun. I thought he was 84. I was like, man, that is awesome. I thought you, I thought you were expanding my audience. Born in '84, was in was in middle school. What do we got? Ooh, axle tubes and diff covers and C hubs. This is how you build a, uh, oh, uh, RC family drove a rig with 50% overdrive last week. It is weird. Uh, when, when I switched, when we took dig out of Zoidberg, uh, I forgot that he had the wild gears in his front portals. This is front axle link mount. So the only thing I haven't seen is rear link mounts, which is probably one of those emails I got from Amazon saying that it was delayed. Woohoo! So I'm missing one part to, assemb to assemble my wildly non-economical axles, because I just built them all out of pieces. They are going to be very heavy, though. Very heavy, <laughs> because they're all either aluminum or brass. Alright. So here's the here's the box that was sent in. I'm telling you. Uh, I was just I was just telling uh, someone else that had sent something in that the rates they charge at the counter, the counter rates, I'm trying not to give away his address. It's got his return address on it. Is it okay to say, uh, Ohio, Ohio, the box from Ohio. 
July 10, my oldest will be 17. See, that I can't imagine. You're 40, and your oldest is 17. You started proper early. I got a decade on you, and my oldest is 20. There's some, there's some young, there's some young folk in here on a Friday evening or alternately Saturday morning if they're in like New Zealand. Have you ever tested Crawler Innovations dual stage foams? Um, yes. They are in. Uh, who's got them? Yella. I have Crawler Innovations Comp Cut dual stages in. Some LP tusks. LP tusks. That might, if if the rain doesn't obliterate everything, and I can finish the video, uh, Yella is running those in a video. Yes. Ah! All right. I'm trying to figure out how to position the box. There we go. Oldest is thirty. Man. Born in 1980, married 20 years, oldest is 21 years old. Whew. Oh, wait. Did somebody, did somebody ask me a question? Do you mainly run 2S 1300? Uh, I run 3S 1500s, 3S 2200s, and then on occasion, these little 3S 850s. I also run 4S 1300s. But basically, all the packs are going to be in this little small, little tiny form factor like that. The biggest I run is I have a couple of uh, Gen Zace Adventures. I run those in, like, Jolly Green, the 3S4600, because that Axe 3300, that, th that dog can eat. So uh, he needs a bigger battery. Yeah. Our, 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 our friend over there in Norway, 47 with their oldest at 11 years old. That is, yeah, that is starting late. Oldest will be 43, man. 49, kids are one and four. Oh, man. How do you, how do you do, how do you do it? How do you, how do you do it? RC family, I'm 53 and my son is two. Dang, dang. I'm, uh, you know, I miss, I miss when they were little, but, uh, I also kind of don't miss when they were little. They're like big now. If I could just get them to load the dishwasher every once in a while, that'd be great. But, uh, yeah, see Tyler Brown over here as a person with kids, you couldn't take my kids away, but Tyler Brown is 33 with no kids, toy cars, a bass boat and an overland FJ cruiser. Tyler might be, he might be doing it right. I don't know. Like that, maybe he's doing it right. Yeah, we were, we were going to have kids nowhere, nowhere, uh, one way or another. I, I don't know. It was going to end up. Yeah. I never thought I'd get to a point. Like I got a 20 and an 18 and I never thought that I would have a, like technically by, uh, by society standards, like I have adult children. And that, that seems weird to me. So someone in the chat brought, uh, sent in a bunch of, a, a bunch of things. Suburbs, two wheel drive, M4, super soft, off-road buggy front tires. Oh, and then they wrote in, on, in pen, UTB 18. Oh, I got to see what that looks like. We got to do that. Ooh. There's so many goodies in this box. Okay. Are these the... Are these the... Uh, we can't do a guess what's inside me because now you've seen... Well, the 127 of you have seen. Are these the world famous dog toys that someone was using as inserts in a tire? They look... They look filthy. Um, oh, no. <laughs> uh, they are very, they, they feel very firm. 
I wonder if I could just get this on a wheel and just run them like this. Like, I feel like, I feel like these would hook up pretty good. And if you get it bound up right, just right, they'll... Oh my. Oh my god. <laughs> he says, but there's more. Oh, these, oh, those would look so good. So, I'm, I'm, li I'm live on the internet right now. Uh, so, uh, I'm get yeah, um, yeah, these would look amazing. What did I miss? My dogs would be chasing my crawlers all over the place. Yeah, dogs either love toy cars or they really hate them. Ty Joe has five kids from 17 to 10. Oh, Tom will use them as tires. Okay, excellent. Yeah, then I'm definitely just going to use them as the tire. Will they squeak when you roll off an obstacle? Man, do I hope so. Man, that is a... that. I wish I could film an episode of The Dumb right now because these are going on wheels. Rear... Too fragile for racing. Oh yeah, look at that! It's all, it's already it it's half prepared. Oh man, they fit tight too. Oh man, I can just slap these on baseline right now. Look how shallow that hex engagement is. Tamiya is a bunch of psychopaths. <laughs> These are amazing. We'll have to, we're going to have to come on to a conclusion as to, uh, as to who's going to be, who's going to be tasked with testing these because I've never seen these before. We're cat people. We just have cats. So I didn't know that <laughs> carpet is not off road. Grr. Those, those are, those are going to be fantastic. My grandfather had the ancient version of this and would label, like, everything. Would label everything with these things. I didn't know that these Dymo printers that print out on the little tape rolls, I didn't know these were still a thing. I thought that this, I thought that this had gone the way of the Dodo. I am... I am physically excited about a Dymo, as it says, Dymo 3D printer. And it is because you can feel it. We're putting that in a, in a place of honor right, right there. With tape reels, no less. Did I get two colors? Did I get black and red? Yeah, I got black and red. Nice. Oh. What is Spectrum calling this one? SE 1040. Yikes. I haven't said Doug Morgan. I haven't seen a labor a labor little like that in years. Yeah, yeah. People are gonna love squeaky tire video. I think the thumb. I think the thumbnail is gonna is gonna draw people in. There we go. There's the there's the real gold. There's the the true the true. Nuggets of gold, the Reedy Power, and the SC480X, which have, I am making such a mess right now. Look at this. We have a dedicated bin now for Reedy Crawlers and 480s. Somehow, I have five speed controls, but only four motors. I don't... I don't know how that happened, unless somewhere... Oh, I do know how that happened. Junkbot has got a reedy crawler in him, because it's the worst motor in the world. And we built Junkbot out of the worst parts in the world. So, of course, that's happened on there. Do you have a set of Tim Tin outers available if I send you a set of my 3D printed inners? Sir? 
Um, I, I guess, okay, the easiest way would be to take a picture. So we'll, we'll take a picture. We're going to do this in two parts. Okay, turn. This, this is what's right above my head. And uh, we ran out of room. So... I don't know what to do with them. I don't know what to do with them all. It's in the vacuum bag, and I used to keep it vacuumed, but then I would have to add more foams in it, so it just kept getting filled up. So, we got a foam problem around here. It's a proper foam problem. Yeah, the, the, the Tim Tim, and I, do I have any on the, I don't have any on the pegs. I don't have any on the pegs. And someone asked earlier, but it scrolled by about Crazy Crawler. Yeah. I have tried them. They work, but here's the deal. Uh, it's still a single stage foam and they work about as well as a single stage foam. So the, the, the performance advantage over just a good single stage foam is small. Reedy program card. <laughs> This uh, this box, this box just keep giving. Th this box just keeps giving. Amazing. So they make an upgraded version of the SC four eighty, the SC five hundred X. I desperately need to test this, desperately, because. Like, it can't, it can't be worse, right? It's, it has to be better. I didn't, I did not know that this existed. And complete with Reedy Pro Power uh, Program Card. I'm just leaving the bench like this after we're done. Outlaw 27. Maybe timed funny because dirt oval. Probably reverse rotation. Timing looks close to zero. And it is team rough stuff. Team rough stuff. 27 turn. Yeah, timing does look near zero. Remember the days of having to solder the, the, the what are they, caps, resistors onto the side of the can? Them's was the days. Brushes still got a lot of life in them. We're going to have to test that out as well. And we're, we're not... But wait, there's more! Ooh! 25.5, 1800 KV, Trinity. Trinity slot machine. I don't, I don't, I, look at it. Look at it. It's got the, it's got the, it's got 15 degrees of timing on it. <laughs> the canyon, <laughs> it looks like the canyon is, there's material for 30 episodes on the workbench. Yeah, it's going to be impossible to try to figure out what goes where, because I'm just, will it crawl? Banned by roar. Oh, Will it crawl? Oh, we're gonna find out. We're gonna. That's a. That's probably some sort of. That's like a sedan racing motor, isn't it? We'll use it. Because the war is against gravity. Oh yeah. He's got a jumpsuit. He's got kicks. We gotta, we gotta, he's got boots. We can put his boots on. We got a, uh, we got a guy, we got it, we get, we got a guy for the Jeep, man. We got a guy for the Jeep. Gonna, gonna, gonna jumpsuit him out. Oh, man. He's, 
He's he's gonna rock. Bungie Winch for the MB Scaler. Nice. He also has glove hands. If we want to go glove hands. Oh man. This is this uh this <laughs> Stinky J uh should have opened that after the shed was done. Yeah, probably. This is uh half a cup of coffee. You today? I'm going and getting one today. I didn't go get one last week. This I, I tried to make one at home with mix from the Costco, and it didn't taste good, and it made me sad, and I was in a good mood, and it tried to bring my mood down. So we're, we're not going to bring my mood down. These bands. Oh, man. This is the best... This might be the best box I've ever opened in my whole life. Like, everything in here is is joy. Dude. You know how I feel about stickers? Remember, kids. Electricity will kill you. Okay, this, ele this electricity brought a knife. That sticker... We still need to give this charger away. Um, somebody needs to, I mean, before everybody leaves, because everybody's going to bed, uh, <laughs> now that's a workbench, uh, somebody needs to, I'm going to go with, I feel that I'm feeling this one. Somebody needs to figure out how we're going to give away, uh, the charger. We're going, we're going right. We're going right. Remember, kids, electricity will kill you. What a fantastic box. And yes, there are uh, multiple pairs of uh, Groucho glasses in here, which, again, I mean... We can get if I can get this to, to line up just right. There, it's perfect. It's perfect. It sums the it sums the it sums the whole place up. Now you're gonna have to build a shed to keep all your plofferings in. Wheel and Wednesday may never return at this rate. Look, email you a picture of their current charger on file. You know we could do it that way. Uh, either oldest or worst charger would. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would be, I would be, ha I would be happy to uh, raffle the charger. Um, I don't, I mean, we got to figure out how to. Uh... Oh, could do. Everyone put a comment, and I could put everyone's name in a hat and choose it at random. Yeah, I could do that. Yeah, I, I just, I want somebody to get this because it is a good charger. Uh, it's just a, yeah, I'm, I would love to do the, the, the Robin hoodiest and give it to the person who needs it the most. Somebody with a small budget. Um, I mean, my, my, my temptation, uh, you know, cause I don't, I don't feel <laughs> you can guess how many foams are in the zip bag. Webb, the problem with that is then I would have to count the foams in the zip bag because I don't know how many foams are in there. I just keep shuffing them in there. Um, I Okay, so everybody keeps saying raffle it. So what I'm going to have to do is... I, I, yeah, because I, I feel... Be th here, here's a great part of why I will never... Uh, I will never be successful. Like monetarily, right? I, I don't want to talk about like the state of my soul. Uh, it's like when I got this and they sent it in for testing, I knew right away I was just gonna I was just gonna give it away. So never would it have occurred to me uh, to to raffle it off to try to make money off of it. It didn't cost me anything, and I made a video out of it, and a couple people watched it. And yeah, it's pretty much the same as every the Venom and 
all those charges that run for around for years. That doesn't take away from it being a pretty good charger, 200 watts per channel. It's perfectly fine. I think it's 100 watts on AC. It's great. Um, yeah, I mean, my my first temptation, somebody just said, where is it? Uh, Stinky J said, that, how about the guy buying his first RTR? Uh, wouldn't be opposed. I mean, it helps his budget. He can He can get something nice. Yeah, the kids have all my budget. I know how that is. Yeah, be careful with a raffle. They can get you into hot water. Yeah, also, yeah. I feel like giving it away, giving this away, I feel like no money is involved. It doesn't seem like money to me. As soon as it's a raffle, I feel like, I feel like money is involved. So his name was, uh, his name was, uh, dang, it was a, it was a minute ago. I'm squinching up my face trying to remember what his name was all right the guy who had a 500 the the, the battle bot guy it, it the it's in uh it, is the it was are we are we all talking about the battle bot guy because if it's the battle bot guy then the then the the the, the people of the chat have all kind of decided to give it to the battle black guy because he he's he doesn't have he's never done this oof tracks his, mike jones tracks his id with conversion plugs is rough uh <laughs> but yeah well, i have seen i have seen more than enough people that say uh rtr guy the guy who were are we if if we are talking about the guy that we were trying to convince to get a sport, is he a true member or a free ride member? I don't know. I don't like you know. Like I say, uh, I don't know. Braden, Bra Braden, Braden. I feel like Braden. We're just calling him Battlebot guy. If Battlebot guy is still here. Yeah. Yeah, Braden. Yeah. Are you are you talking about me? <laughs> yeah, Battlebot guy. I'm um, sorry, Braden, you're just Battlebot guy now. Uh Braden, uh if you would like the 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 community uh wants you to have the GT Power X2 uh X2 Pro. Uh if yeah, $500 budget TRX4 Sport. If you are if you are looking for a charger uh, if you don't have a charger, then uh, send me an email and uh, give me your address, and this one's yours. That that that's that that's how that's how we'll do that. So yes, Battlebot guy, we are absolutely talking about you. So the the people, the the this this is a this is a part of a part. This part of the four hundred four, <laughs> he gets the charger, but he has to change his name to Battlebot guy. Seconded. <laughs> Uh, I'm, I'm all for it. Hey, uh, JC NorCal, there is absolutely nothing wrong with a generic B6 charger. We were, I was using a Sigma Power Pro, which was a generic B6 charger forever, forever. Uh, we have only gotten good chargers in the past, well, well 10 years. But for a hobby that I've been in since I was 13 years old, <laughs> the, the, the amount of time that we've been on good chargers is, is pretty short. So there will be, or put it behind his name, yeah, Braden Battlebot guy. Yeah. He just, I don't know, it, he might be horrible, he might be aghast at being uh, now, uh, that he is now Battlebot guy, but that's just, that's just, it's just, he's just battle, he's battle, bot, he's battle bot guy now. And he's getting an X2 Pro GT Power unless he emails me and says, I don't want that. And if he does, then, uh, then, uh, then we'll, then we'll figure something out, uh, in the future. And, 
Uh, I get it, it, it I, it's worthy of mention here at the moment. It was just here on the bench uh, a little bit ago. I don't know how far out. Uh, probably sometime in April, but the FCX 10 will likely be sitting here on the bench in the same sort of presentation as the Chargers were today. The FCX 10 will be going out to some member or subscriber of the Canyon. We have not decided which, but uh, it will be... It will be going out, and I'm going to have to think of something. I have an idea. It's not going to be as easy as how we're just giving up the charger and somebody's saying we should give it to BattleBot guy. We're going to we're going to come to a conclusion, and I'm going to make you jump some hoops. Maybe not to the same hoops that we're supposed to give this one away. I think it's appropriate that he's sitting on the bench and not sitting in Belgium right now. But uh, Irwin jumped through all the hoops to get the number for that guy. And uh, it will be it will be similar uh, in that easier but similar. And uh, oh yeah, John Peck. Yeah, if I don't find a box that precisely fits the outside of this box, I will sh absolutely stuff it full of tire foams because that's what I use as packing material because they're free and they won't stop giving them to me. They just keep showing up. And aside from, I mean that that bag would be a lot less full. If every tire foam was like this. But uh, those are filled with magic. And uh, most stock foams are not. Yeah, <laughs> shipping. Uh, Mike Cross, it was 20 US dollars to ship a number double zero padded envelope to you in, in, in the great mythical land of New Zealand. And for those of you who are not familiar with envelope sizes, this is a double zero. So to send this to New Zealand was twenty dollars U.S. money, and uh, it was. I think it said ten to fourteen days. So <clears throat> so that will go to uh, Battlebot guy. Uh, shouldn't he, well, where's my, where did, what'd you do with my phone? Uh, we'll see. Did, oh, okay. I have like 40 emails now. So we're, we're, we're doing, we're doing good here. Oh, do I have more? Oh, it hasn't checked my email in an hour and a half. Oh, I don't have nearly as many as I thought. I have 44 unread emails. So yeah. <laughs> 30 New Zealand dollars to ship that envelope with some stuff in it. So we will, we will get these things distributed out. And as was pointed out, I will be building a set of 10 pro axles using no axial parts at all because, oh, do you want to bet this is a bag in a bag in a bag in a bag in a bag? They were doing, these are just solid brass stubs for the pros. And the whole reason it happened was me, us racing was doing front and rear center bits for the 10 pro axle, 17 bucks. And then the weights, I think these are in Jorah's. No, these are Zerkasers and they're 116 grams a piece. They were like 29 bucks. So all the parts were really cheap. RCAWD for the rear shafts. I got the front shafts from somebody else. Uh, AMK for the diff covers. This is the front link mount, which is a big crazy thing. Was this real link mount? No, it's C hubs. Yeah, so the only thing not here, one item got delayed out of my Amazon order, and that was uh, the rear link mounts. I'll probably just throw those in a box. Maybe I'll throw them together next week. We'll see. Uh, thank you so much. I will be getting in touch with you about something to review from AliExpress. Absolutely, Mike Cross. Uh, I tell the same thing to everyone. If anybody ever sends me an email and says they want to send something into the canyon, I say, I say to them, if it shows up, I will test it. Erwin <laughs> uh, says I should get in my car, drive 20 miles and 25 miles, and make those guys make tires again. I'm driving over to Panther. 
I'm going over to Panther in Riverside, and I'll be like, you need to start making cougars again, only you're going to make them in a bunch of different sizes now. Because, man, they do, they absolutely do feel amazing. All right. All right, so I hope to hear from uh, the gentleman that we have referred to as BattleBot Guy uh, for, for that charger, and then we'll do that. I wonder how fully 3D printed tires would work. Um, it could be done. Twheel style, like a Michelin twheel. You would really have to find the right... I mean, it's, it, it would be as critical on finding the, the right compound and the right density, the right amount of infill, as it is with like just doing any other insert, really, I would think, because that's the that seems to be the the the, the number one sticking issue with 3D printed inserts is the difference in one percent of infill can make the difference between a tire working and a tire not working. And I think a full I think a tire insert hybrid would be would be every bit the same. <laughs> Eric Rombo, I mean, I emailed Panther and said they need to start making those tires again. They do. They really do. All right. So. Mike Cross is headed off to lunch. Um, when you post the pics of other people's rigs, are they members only and how do you? Uh, no, I uh, anybody who sends, who sends stuff in... Uh, who emails me pics, I just put them on the community tab. So after I run and get myself a delicious coffee beverage at my local bookstore, and it's like a Barnes & Noble, it's not like anything fancy, uh, I am probably going to, uh, I will hit these emails to all the people who have emailed and asked about stuff, and I will get stuff boxed up, and we will try to get some of this stuff moved out of here to get it cleared out a little bit so that we can... Uh, we can do this. We can do this all over again, and look forward very soon. I will. I will very soonly be. Uh, I, I, I got to do these. This is. This is something else. Uh, baseline, maybe. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see who ends up on the dog squeak toys, and we'll get this guy dressed up. And I got to. Maybe he can steal the other helmet. I've also got a pilot's hat. We'll uh, we'll, we'll gussy. Oh, give those pro lines a squeeze. We'll uh, we'll gussy them up. Well, you restapled. So how? Oh man. Okay, we're, we're we're gonna we're gonna head out. We're gonna head out. We're gonna head out. Everybody, we're gonna head out a, a little bit. A little a little. Uh, when the compounds were good, ASMR for you. I mean, gummy suburbs in whatever blue was probably their clay compound. That definitely looks like a clay tire. I bet that little UTB uh, is going to hook up on these. I mean, <laughs> They truly do not make them like that anymore. Nice. All right. I'll get those mounted up. I bet you could put together a large order of Panther Cougars. I need, honestly, I want to get in, I, I want to get in contact with them. I really do. Those tires are so good. So thank you so much, everybody for coming by this. You know what? I, I don't know about all y'all. I had a good time. We, we, we did an unboxing. Uh, we, we put things together. We took things apart. Baseline's center is uh, happy. That we're all, we're all happy. What a great, what a great Friday. What a way to start the weekend. What, a, it, not just a good Friday, everybody. It was a great Friday. I'm going to imbibe a caffeinated beverage and then I am going to respond to the, last I checked it was 44. Yeah. My 44 unread emails 
that I've gotten since this began, because I, I assume many of them are from you folks. If uh, if BattleBot Guy is still in there, please, BattleBot Guy, shoot me an email, uh, thecrawlercanyon at gmail, and we will get that charger on the way to you. Have a fantastic weekend, everybody. It is more Ruby tomorrow, part two of the of the quick view of the Element Night Runner, uh, Trail Runner, and uh, I haven't filmed Sunday yet. Woo! We like to keep it smooth and easy. Everything's flowing. I'll see you again real soon in the comments, in the emails, on the live stream. We'll see you uh, everywhere. Thank you so much for joining us here in the canyon. And as we like to say, until we meet again, one and all, between now and then, do your very best to have a good one, everybody. Thanks so much for coming by the canyon. We will see you again uh, real soon. We d I think we did okay. And for those who are wondering, frames do missed due to rendering lag one. 439,421 frames. Maybe next time we'll shoot for half a million frames. Woo! Thanks for coming by the canyon, everybody. We'll see you next time. Uh, I hope we all enjoyed. I enjoyed. Until we meet again.